TikTok, time to rock. We've got Anime Comic Geek Studio says I'm kind of sad they're not on yet. I think we are on. Yes, we're on. I see my I see my face. All right, so we're here. So good evening to everyone. I got or I should include good morning and good afternoon because people are uh, tuning in from all around the world. I am your friendly neighborhood philosopher David Wood, and with me, by popular demand is the man who makes Muhammad's bones shake in their grave. It's the Christian Prince. How you doing, Christian Prince? I'm fine. Thank you, David. And uh, before we start, I want to say thank you for inviting me. And I'm so glad to be uh, you know, finally speaking to you. Uh, and having all uh, those who they are, you know, they wanted this to happen. It's happening. So I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Oh, yeah. There were uh, people have been uh, telling me to have you on for months I'm just not good at contacting new people, um, but but here we are now. Um, all right, so we're going to be taking some uh, questions and comments from everyone in the chat here once we once we get going. But uh, there may be people here who aren't familiar with you, uh, aren't familiar with your work. So in order to help them get to know you a bit better, why don't you share a little bit about where you grew up, um, your background? And everyone who's watching, while he's doing that, be sure to wage jihad on that like button and share the link on your social media. Uh, well, you know, uh, I am uh, an Arab. I speak Arabic. Arabic is my first language. And I studied Islam. I have a degree in the Islamic law. Um, and um, mm, uh, my study is not the reason really I know. Uh, the reason I know it's because I you know, study hard, so I can answer the Muslims. And um, I don't know much. I mean, the rest about me is what people know, like I do. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you have a degree, you said, in Islamic law. Yes. Why on earth would a Christian want to get a degree in Islamic law? Um, you know, when I was uh, very young. Um, you know, like, always, you go to church, nobody wants to talk about Islam. You speak to your friends, nobody wants to talk about Islam. And the Muslims always, they challenge us, and there's nobody to answer them. So, I decided to study, so I can learn, really, what Islam is about. In the same time, uh, you know, uh, I can take a stand for my belief. And that's what I did exactly, which is actually against the will of my family, mm -hmm. because they wanted me to study something useful, not something stupid, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because for them they are Christians and Islam, studying Islam is a waste of uh, time, uh, it's not worth it, and it is, uh, uh, you know, it's not really, it's not a good thing, and I agree with them, you know, but always good things can happen from bad things. Mm -hmm. um, all right, well, uh, I wanted to ask you a couple questions about your approach uh, the kind of two issues here i hear from christians um i hear from christians all the time and guys those who are uh, asking to uh, adjust the adjust the base and stuff like that no there's not we, we've started there's uh i can adjust the volume that's about all we can do here so uh just gotta live with it uh, any changes have to make at a different time um christian prince um i hear from christians all the time and you're a perfect person to answer since you're the christian prince um, I hear from Christians who say that when you're interacting with Muslims, you shouldn't criticize Muhammad or the Quran. This is just going to drive Muslims away. They're not going to listen to anything you say. And so you just focus on sharing the gospel with them. Just present Jesus. Don't criticize their position or they're never going to listen to you. Uh, that's obviously not your approach. So what do you think of that? Uh, you know, uh, me, I am a Middle Eastern, so I understand the nature of the Middle East. And the nature of people there is totally different from what people think. And maybe what you are saying can be, uh, you know, um, valid for those who they are American, who they are born in America. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, Arab, Middle Eastern, Muslims, if you are too much nice, they think you are weak. They, they uh, uh, they play the game of uh, intimidation. It's not really uh, about, uh, uh, you know, like uh, the, way, the way you approach them, 
uh, you see, even the Quran says that Allah, He made us to be humiliated. So when a Muslim, He speaks to you and you are so kind to the point you don't even, you want you know, like people to say, well, you are rude. I'm not rude, I'm just being truthful as it is. Same time, the Quran told the Muslims that Allah, He cursed us and He made us uh, people who, of humiliation, which means uh, in Arabic it says, Durbat Alihim Zulla. If you, if, you, if you go to chapter 3, verse 12, 1, 1, 12, it says that Allah, He made us people who they are nice to humiliate us, not because we are nice. So the Muslims, they have different understanding for your kindness. Maybe you are trying to be kind because you are a Christian, but for a Muslim, you make him believe that Allah is saying the truth in chapter 3, verse 1, 12, because He cursed us and He made us nice to be humiliated. So... I am not nice with somebody who don't believe in being nice. And if somebody saying to me all kind of things, why I cannot say all kind of things to him too? Mm -hmm. And why I have to speak in a way uh, uh, some people want me to speak in? This is the way it should be. You know, even the Lord, the Messiah, he said, either yea, yea, or nay, nay, be truthful. So, you know, uh, no political correctness. Uh, uh, the Messiah himself, he was not uh, politically correct. And he spoke to the Jews in many ways, and many of them, they are harsh. Mm -hmm. So being harsh, not because I hate the Muslims, I never hate the Muslims, but being harsh because the religion, the topic is harsh itself, and the nature of this religion is harsh too. Now, um, so you, you're, you're, you're pointing out, one, given the group, given the group that Muslims tend to uh, not listen to you unless you're... So, in other words, it's kind of the opposite of what many Western Christians think, right? They they somehow have come to conclude that if you're aggressive with Muslims, Muslims aren't going to listen to you. You're saying it's actually the opposite. If you're if you're if you don't have an aggressive approach, they're not going to listen to you. Well, you see, in the in the Middle East, the one who shouts louder is the one who his voice is heard. So. Uh, I know where I'm coming from. I know the, the culture. I know the nature. And, uh, you know, everybody, you know, I, anyway, for me, I am very successful. I have, you know, a lot of people who live Islam. So if the way I'm doing it is not right, then how you can explain people living Islam left and right? Mm -hmm. So uh, obviously it's working. It's good. And I, I, you know, I don't insult people. I just say things as it is. I mean, you're a prophet, is a false prophet. What's wrong with that? I mean, what I should say? I should say to him, your prophet is a good prophet when he's not. Mm -hmm. So I approach in a way which is, go straight to the point. So um, you've, uh, you've mentioned uh, a couple of times, and people have been pointing out in the chat that uh, lots of Muslims, contrary to what many Christians in the West believe, lots of Muslims do listen to you, and they leave Islam, and many of them become... Christians. So, uh, what kind of results uh, have you seen over the years? Um, actually, I can say to you. Uh, over oh wait! The... Hey, well, you just got uh, your sound got much more clear. All right, that's good. Did I changed my. I changed the microphone from my side. Actually, maybe this is what what was a switch. Uh, oh yeah, that's perfectly clear now, guys. Uh, does that sound that sound better? Was, uh, yeah, there were people. There were people. Uh, yeah, perfectly right. clear now. All right. All right. Uh, you see, I have in the last few months, I have, I don't know how many, I cannot even count how many people left Islam. And, uh, you know, I don't change the way I talk. This is how I, the way I talk. Uh, this is the way I even, I, I mean, even when I speak to Christians, I mean, if somebody, uh, he says something I don't like, I, you know, I speak, this is how I am. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I am not someone else. This is how I am. Mm -hmm. And who like it, like it, or don't like it, it's up to him. I mean, what I can do. I mean, you don't like it, don't listen to me. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I, I have to say, um, it's when I, especially when I think about people in the Middle East, right? Uh, Assyrians, um, uh, the the Copts in Egypt, the, the Christians in Pakistan. When I think what they have what they have gone through historically um, due to Islam, if the biggest criticism you can say is, guys, you're being too harsh when you're criticizing this ideology that has been oppressing your people for centuries. That's kind of a as 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 someone who lives in America, I just don't think it's my place to tell people who come from that sort of background how they should be talking about Islam. You see, uh, David, you did uh, just a few, uh, uh, maybe a month or six weeks ago, you, you debated a guy, his name is Mimi Hijab. 
And you saw how he was trying uh, all his best just to humiliate and to insult, but mm-hmm. not to debate. Yeah. The reason, you know, uh, uh, for him, you are too nice because you are not coming from the same background. For him, humiliation is a way of winning. It's not mm-hmm. he wanna he may, may make fun, even though he's saying stupid things, uh, even though he said the most stupid things ever, which is against Islam. I mean, he not only he lost the debate, he looked like an idiot in the village. So yet he think by making fun, he is the winner. So this is a culture thing. This is a mentality. This is a mindset. Uh, uh, if you don't understand them. Uh, you know, like uh, you will not even able to go through their mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, they they are they are grow they grow this way, and they think if you are kind, that's mean you are weak, and if you are uh, you know very gentle and you are not rude, that's mean you don't uh, you know uh, you are afraid. You know mm-hmm. this is how they see it. Mm-hmm. For me, you know, uh, uh, I am from there. I know how to speak to them. Actually, this is why they don't want to get close to me. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's interesting. Uh, in in, the, in that for for that debate, they made me agree ahead of time that uh, I would be very nice and not be insulting at all, and uh, be very friendly the entire time. And uh, so it, it seems they under they understand as well that if you can get the Christian debater to be nice the entire time, and the Muslim to be insulting, yes, there are Westerners who will watch that and think, oh, this you know, why is this guy being so insulting? But uh, lots of Muslims, boy, they they love it. Now, uh, we're going to take some questions here in a minute. I had a, I had two questions just on the Arabic, since you're a native Arabic speaker. Not not anything specific, but basically here's here's the idea. Um, the main argument that, that the Quran gives for its uh, divine inspiration is what I call the argument for, for li- the argument from literary excellence, meaning that it's just so amazingly written that it, it has to come from God. But I read the Quran a lot, and I just think it's the most horrible book that I've ever read. I would literally rather read a phone book than read the Quran. I do read the Quran because, you know, I have to interact with Muslims. But if I were just picking something that I want to read, I would actually pick a phone book before I would read the Quran. It's, it's organized horribly. It jumps around from topic to topic. You can't make sense of anything it's saying. I mean, at least a phone book is organized. Um, and you know, all these, uh, uh, calls for violence and so on, but I'm told by Muslims that this is only because I'm reading it in English. If I were to read it in Arabic, then I would see that it's clearly miraculous. The greatest book so great that, uh, human beings couldn't have written it. So when you read the Quran in Arabic, how do you, how do you resist the power of the Quran to compel you to believe that it is the word of God? You know, the answer is from the Quran. If you go to chapter 8, verse number 31, the Arab, they were making fun of the Quran, saying this is the fairy tales of the older, the elders. And if we wish, we can make even better than this. Everybody can go and read it. This is a book full of mistakes in Arabic, in a grammar, in a spelling, in a pronunciation. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, they they fabricate tons of story. Here we go. We are the Arab Christian. Why we aren't amazed? I mean, if Muhammad he was able to make people to uh, to convert to Islam by just hearing the Quran, so why did they not convert? Why Muhammad he went in war? Here we go. They are Arab in his time, and they were making fun of the Quran. So if you go in the Quran, you will find uh, 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 the word fairy tale mentioned nine times. The Arab they say to Muhammad, this is fairy tale and this is stupid. And then the Muhammad he says, well, it's stupid. Can you make something like it? And this is, a, this is a stupid challenge. I mean, I'm just saying to you, this is stupid. You say to me, can you make some stupid like mine? So uh, uh, Muhammad, he did not succeed in the Arabic. The Arabic is a stupid language, the way he used it. And he was, uh, the, the, uh, the Arabic in the Quran is a croak Arabic, is not correct Arabic. Uh, and if you, if you want to talk about the Book of Wisdom, you know, I don't know if you can open chapter 24, verse number 61, and read to the audience. And they will be astonished about how stupid this book is. I mean, this is a God who speak and he teach and he squeeze his head and he send an angel with a message from thousands and millions of miles away. Remember where Allah, like God knows where Allah is. And now he come to us to say to us, you can eat alone and you can eat in your home and you can eat with your sister. And you can eat your, 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 in, the, in, the, in the house of your mother. Anybody can read the verse, chapter 24, verse number 61. Want me to go ahead and read it for everyone? Go ahead. All right. 
So this is the greatest book ever written that can only be written by God, everyone. There is no blame on the blind man, nor is there blame on the lame, nor is there blame on the sick, nor on yourselves, that you eat from your houses, or your father's houses, or your mother's houses, or your brother's houses, or your sister's houses, or your paternal uncle's houses, or your paternal aunt's houses, or your maternal uncle's houses, or your maternal aunt's houses, or what you possess the keys of, or your friend's houses. It is no sin in you that you eat together or separately. So when you enter houses, greet your people with a salutation from Allah, blessed and goodly. Thus does Allah make clear to you the communications that you may understand. And I think I think uh, everyone in the chat is ready to recite the Shahada if they haven't already, because that is so masterfully written. I mean, that's it. I mean, we, it's no sin on you, no sin. I mean, imagine he's saying no sin if you eat alone or if you eat with somebody else. I mean, this is madness, it's stupid. So he spent, he sent an angel of God and he written in a book of wisdom to teach us to say, if you are blind, you can eat at home where the blind used to eat where before. I mean, in the time of Muhammad, there's no restaurants. Where do you want to eat? You are blind, you cannot walk, or you are sick. And even if you are not any of those, still you can eat at home. I mean, look at the news. So Muhammad, he came to us with something beyond intelligence. It's like super. And then he says to us, you can eat in the house of your mother. Finally, I'm going to call my mother and tell her, hey, mom, I can eat in your house. She will say to me, idiot, you are eating in my house all your life. So what is this about? This is silly. This is stupid. So uh, you, 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 you said uh, you, you brought up a couple points there. But, but basically, um, what I hear from Muslims is, you know, if you just read the Quran in Arabic, you'll find out that it is the word of Allah. And true Arabic speakers will, will recognize that. You're pointing out that even according to the Quran, people of Muhammad's time all of whom were Arabic speakers, they thought the Quran was a was a big joke. Well, all of them, and actually Muhammad, he don't even have a book. You see, if you go and read the book of the Quran, uh, uh, okay, you know, if you go to the to the Bible, you know, you want to search where God, how He created things. You go to the book of Genesis. Mm -hmm. Where in the Quran we can find how God created the whole earth and heaven? It's all over. It's like somebody, he put a bunch of papers in the front of a fan, big fan, and he turned it on. And then we collect them together and we make a book. So nothing there make, make, makes sense. And then, you know, uh, 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 if, if you go in the Quran, you will find uh, things. Because of this madness, uh, the Quran says that today, as an example, in chapter 3, verse number 7, Today, I completed your religion for you, accepted Islam for you, and then why? You know, because, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, you know, we like, we, we make you, you know, like not to eat pigs, not to eat pork. Mm -hmm. So, so when the Quran speak uh, about, about religion, then we will find, you know, you know like, I mean, I don't know how to explain to you, uh, I wish everybody can, you know, uh, uh, speak Arabic because you will die laughing from the stupidity of this Arabic. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if we go in the Quran, as an example, in chapter 3, verse number 85, it says, the one who accept other than Islam, Allah will not accept from him. And then Allah, in the same chapter, he says to us that the Christians and the Jews and the Sabian, they will go to heaven. Then, but why you call him Christians and why you call them Sabian? And why you call them uh, 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 Jews if they are Muslims? This is stupid. If you go to chapter 5, verse number 3, uh, three it says that Allah, he forbid for you, etc., 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 etc. And then he said, today I completed my favor upon you and choosing Islam as religion for you. But this is the chapter 5, verse number 3. It is in the beginning of the Quran. This verse can be accurate. If this is at the, la the last verse in the Quran, like Jesus in the cross says, it's complete. Here, mm -hmm. it says complete in the beginning of the Quran. How we can solve this problem? This problem can be solved easy by saying, okay, the one who made the book, he took this verse, he put it here, but it should be at the end of the book. And yet the Muslim, they say to us that this is the book of Allah. If, if Muhammad said this verse in the beginning, that's mean all the chapter after chapter 5, verse number 3 are fabricated. Because... He just said, I don't know if you can read it for us, uh, 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 David. Mm -hmm. Chapter 5, verse 3, if you can read it so people, they can see. I mean, this is a crazy. How he, uh, he, how he uh, complete the religion for them, accepted Islam for them, I complete my favor upon you. Mm -hmm. Ready? Um, 
Chapter 5, verse 3. Forbidden to you is that which dies of itself, and blood, and flesh of swine, and that on which any other name than that of Allah has been invoked, and the strangled, and that beaten to death, and that killed by a fall, and that killed by being smitten with the horn, and that which wild beasts have eaten, except what you slaughter, and what is sacrificed on stones set up for idols, and that you divide by the arrows, that is a transgression. This day have those who disbelieve, despaired of your religion, so fear them not, and fear me. This day have I perfected for you your religion, and completed my favor on you, and chosen for you Islam as, the, as a religion. But whoever is compelled by hunger, not inclining willfully to sin, then surely Allah is forgiving, merciful. I'm sure there are uh, here more people, even more people, ready to recite the Shahada after hearing that. So he completed his favor upon them by saying to them, you cannot eat pork. That's it. Islam is complete now. So all those the chapters after. And here you notice, I don't know if you notice with me, uh, uh, David, that in the same verse at the end, it says, after all what he forbid, if you are hungry, still you can eat all of those, which means you can eat pork. Even pork you can eat. But then we find this is a contradiction for chapter 2, verse number 65. Isn't it Allah who cursed the Jews and he made them pigs and monkeys because they broke the Sabbath? Mm -hmm. Why they broke the Sabbath? Because they are hungry. Mm -hmm. Because Allah, he made this fish only appear in the Sabbath. So those people, if they are hungry, they are not allowed. But if the Muslims are hungry, they can eat pork. <laughs> yeah, I've, no, I've never actually made a video on that one. I might have to, uh, I might have to knock out a video on... Uh... <laughs> on that contradiction there. Uh, one, one more question, then we'll, we'll, we'll turn it over to, to chat here. Um, along the same lines, one of the other things that Muslims say, uh, because one of the main arguments that they give, thanks to Ahmed Didat and Zakir Naik, is the amazing scientific insights of the Quran, that Muhammad knew things that no one at the time could have known and that weren't discovered until centuries later, and scientists are still marveling at the amazing scientific accuracy of the Quran even today. I sit here and I read the Quran and it looks like a scientific catastrophe. Um, it looked like every, like if you were to invent the most ridiculous picture of the universe that you could possibly come up with, that's what Muhammad believed about the universe. If you could come up with the silliest theories about human reproduction that you could possibly come up with, that's what Muhammad believed about human reproduction. But what I hear from my Muslim friends is, you know, in the Arabic, you find that, that, that everything is correct, that, that, it's, that it's amazing and has all these scientific insights. Since you read the sources in Arabic, would you agree with the Muslims that their sources are filled with amazing scientific insights that prove that Islam is true? The Quran is the most stupid book ever I saw all my life, and I, I challenge any Muslim to prove me wrong. The God of Islam even don't remember which one he created first, the trees or the, or the stars. Have you ever heard of, of a maker? He says something in one verse. He says the opposite in different verse. The Quran do not know even how the baby he's created. He says that the baby, he was a sperm and then he became a congealed blood, which is funny because the sperm was, it was a sperm and then it became a congealed blood. Muhammad, he explained and he says that the sperm stay inside the mother for 50 days. Have you ever heard of a science like this? But the Muslims, the, the, the problem is when the Muslims, they try to make the Quran as a scientific book, they fabricate the translation, they change the meaning to make it fit with science. As an example, when, when the Quran says Allah, he made the sperm into a congealed blood, the Muslims, they say in many translation, uh, 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 it was, uh, you were a sperm and then you became a, a clot. But this is not a true. This not, it doesn't say that. It says the sperm became a clot. If you go in Sahih al-Bukhari, as an example, uh, Muhammad, he says, in hadith number 2644, he said that the semen remain in the womb of the women for 40 or 50 days. And this is authentic hadith. So this is the science of Muhammad claiming that semen can live for 50 days. Science says maximum five days. So That's the correct. only error mistake is only a zero. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah.
That, that is correct, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in other words, if you go to your biology class and you ask your biology teacher or professor, how long can a sperm survive? You'll hear maximum five to seven days. Uh, not so, according to Muhammad. So if you're a Muslim, you could spend a lot of time. You could spend a lot of time correcting your teachers and professors. Um, all right, uh, Christian Prince, we'll, we'll, we'll be talking more about the, uh, the Muslim sources and, and uh, what the Quran says. I uh, wanted to, to ask you a little bit about, um, you seem to have a lot of problem with your videos getting taken down and things like that. Uh, there's a comment over here by Guy777 that'll kind of, um, I'll reply to this real quick and then, um, and then get your comments because... Uh, there is there is an issue with uh, censoring critics of Islam. Now, Guy777 here says, so I'm a Christian and got banned for criticism of Catholic doctrine, but you guys criticize Islam for a living. Why ban me? Um, well, no one's stopping you from talking about Catholic doctrine, Guy777. No one's talking, uh, no one's stopping you from talking about Protestants, Orthodox, Catholics, anything. Uh, when we have a when we have a topic and we're going to be addressing something, if we're going to be discussing the interaction between Islam and Christianity, there always seems to be a small group of people who want to divert the discussion in the chat to something else, right? So flat earthers will show up and we'll start arguing, hey, everything is about flat earth. Uh, people start bringing up political issues, and we're we're talk we're we're discussing a topic, right? We're discussing issues. And there are people who try to divert them. No one's stopping you from talking about those things, but go somewhere where they're discussing those things. If we're sitting here talking about, um, if we're talking about whether Muhammad's a prophet and you're over in the comments section trying to prove that the earth is flat or something like that, no one's stopping you from doing that, but do it somewhere where that's actually the topic. So what you're asking is, um, why would you be banned for trying to divert the discussion over to what you want to talk about? Um, I hope when you hear it like that, you can understand the answer, right? If everyone's over in the chat trying to divert the discussion to some other topics, then no one's actually paying attention. And what, what's the point of even having the discussion if no one's paying attention because they're talking about other things? So if you are diverting to any topic, and it doesn't matter what it is, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you're trying to divert it to, uh, then you're going to have to uh, be blocked from this discussion for that. Keep in mind, guys, there's a difference between um, stopping you your free speech and blocking you from a discussion that you're interrupting, right? In the United States, we have protected free speech. That doesn't mean you get to come into my room and scream in my ear all you want. You can't say, oh, I'm screaming in your ear in your house because it's freedom of speech. No, that, that's, that's a separate issue, right? No one's gonna stop you from stating your positions in certain places, in public, on the streets, in public parks, things like that. Um, so no one's stopping you from saying your positions on YouTube, Facebook, out in the parks, wherever you want. Um, this, this area, it's like our house and we're inviting people to the house to have a discussion and thing. And you're coming in and trying to divert the, divert the, the discussion to what you want to talk about. No, you can't do it. So that's a different issue. Um, try again, but don't do that again, or I'm going to block you again. All right. So Christian Prince, with that said, what is, what has been your experience of interacting with Islam on sites like YouTube, which have some sort of commitment to free speech, and they say everyone's welcome to, the, to pay their ideas. Now, um, why do your videos keep getting blocked and so on? Yeah. Uh, before I go there, I want to answer this guy. He answered about, uh, asked about the Catholic. First of all, the Quran in chapter 5, verse number 14 said, I will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians until the judgment day. And for me, when you do that, you are serving Allah. You are not criticizing anyone. Secondly, you might even be a Muslim and how we know even you are a Christian. Number three, the Catholic, they are people who believe in Jesus. They believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So you are wasting my time and very expensive time. We spend our life to speak about things which is not really worth it for us. Go to the front place. There is a guy I can advise you to go to his channel. His name is Muhammad James White and he hid the Catholic to death. He will welcome you and he will have you and will give you a big long hug. Now we go to YouTube. YouTube, anything we say against Islam, they take us down. It doesn't matter what you say, even if you see, say hello. The second you, uh, the second you attack Islam, the second you are not welcome. Say something good about Islam, they will welcome you. I cannot even keep my videos for a few hours live on air. I have to keep them taking them down 
because they keep sending me. I received tons of emails from YouTube saying, Pakistan government complained about this video and about this video and about this video and about this video. I mean, and we have to take them, you know, away. So Pakistan government don't agree. Muslims don't agree. I mean, I live in America. What I have to do with Pakistan? And why Pakistan have control of YouTube? So, you know, we cannot say something without being uh, chased. And this is the reality. And because, you know, because of that, I keep asking people to carry on my videos and spread them all over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and by the way, guys, I, I say the same thing um, because there's really I, every day when I wake up and I open my computer, I think, OK, I might open it up and it might say you've been banned from YouTube just because of, uh, I get messages all the time from YouTube saying your your video has been banned in Germany. This video has been banned in Pakistan. Uh, I get entire lists of videos that are blocked in Pakistan. So you just wonder when you're going to get up and uh, a bunch of people false flagged a bunch of your videos again, and then you uh, you get banned from the platform. So it's uh, it's a pretty pretty rough pretty rough position. By the way, um, uh, the guy who just asked the question about Catholics, he said uh, he he, uh, he thanked me for for at least answering the question. And so hope that was. For the record, I like James White when James White is, is talking about the top topics that, that James White is really awesome at. But uh, there, is a, there, is, there is a good point there. If you're interested in those kinds of discussions, James White's platforms it deals with those, right? We, we just don't, we, we're not dealing with that there. We're not, we're not dealing with the, the interactions of uh, you know, you know, Catholicism and Protestantism and, and, and Orthodoxy. So um, we're going to continue here. Um, we have here, I'm going to go through some of the questions over here. Someone says, can you please ask the Arabian prophet to explain the Egyptian saying, Sali al-Nabi? Is that something you're familiar with? Yes, uh, Sali al-Nabi, which means pray on the prophet, oh. you know. And uh, actually, this is something happened in, uh, during the debate with Mimi Hijab, when he said to you, it's mean pray for, not pray to. Supposedly, he fixed it, but the fact he make it blind. Uh uh, Allah and his angels, they are praying on the Prophet. So, Salli ala nabi it is a term which the Arab, they keep repeating based in the order of the Quran, where it says that every Muslim, every believer, have to pray on the Prophet. And even Allah himself, he pray on the Prophet and the angels, which means Muhammad became or become the center of the universe. Mm -hmm. So, you're saying, you're saying that this actually means, refers to prayer here. Absolutely, this is a prayer. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, 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 like when you when you ask in your debate about the word salah, and they the, start making they start making fun. I mean, uh, uh, show me one word in the Quran. It doesn't say salah. Mean a pray. Only in that verse they play with the translation, and suddenly the word salah become blessing. However, even if we switch pray to blessing that would be stupid because if Allah blessed Muhammad why he need the blessing of an angel and what mean what it's mean that the angels they will ask Allah for more blessing that is silly I mean that's it Allah he blessed him it's like saying to me uh, uh, save me and I and I and I saved you and you say ask the angels to ask me to save you like I already I saved you I am the God so if Allah is God and already he blessed Muhammad so what the point of asking all those people to ask for a blessing this is stupid I mean uh, it, this is why I say Islam is is is, uh, is like not 10 inch deep in the mud it is beyond the mud experience i mean this is the extreme stupidity you cannot you, they try to cover up by making a lie but the lie make it more stupid mm -hmm. and that is their problem uh, we 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 actually this is apparently <laughs> this is apparently uh, an important issue for lots of the people in the chat um so we had another one. Uh, ask Christian Prince if Allah prays for or to. Now, if I understand, it's actually prays on. So you would have to interpret it as praise for or something like that. Um, but also asking what Salah means. Now, um, how about uh, how about the word uh, Yusaluna and things like that? Uh, the, the Muslims come here pretty much every chat and they start saying that's different from the word Salah. It's it's a uh, it's it's completely different um, different word that has a different meaning is that is that correct right. no absolutely this is false you know uh, if you go to chapter 2 verse 1 to 5 it says what uh, ibrahim musalla musalla is the praise to pray this is not salah this is a noun now uh, if you go to chapter 3 verse number 39 it says 
فناتته الملائكة وهو قائم يصلي. So the, the angels they called him when he is standing you صلي. Go to the go to that translation you will say it says he he's praying. And, uh, you know, so the Quran is full of the verses saying that the word Salah, if you go to chapter 4, verse 102, it says, So if you are between them and you you start the prayer. So Salah as a, as a, is not a verb. It is uh, when, when we say Salah, it's, it's a noun. When we say you salli, it's a verb, but it's the same. It's like saying. Uh, you know, you speak English better than me. You can you can find tons of examples. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's just a verb and a noun, but it's the same word. You salli and salah is the same. Salah is description of what you are doing. You salli is des description of the action you are doing now. Mm -hmm. you know? All right. Now, everyone, uh, before we're we're gonna we're gonna continue here, but uh, I just wanted to remind everyone. And I'll remind everyone probably two more times before we're done. Uh, the links to Christian Prince's uh, various platforms, those links are in the description box. So you have a link to his YouTube channel if you're not subscribed, uh, link to his Facebook page. And also, if you want to support him, if you want to support him, there's a link to his Patreon uh, page there. So uh, I speak from experience when I say that uh, when we try to dedicate a good portion of our lives to responding to Islam, to making videos, to having these kinds of discussions and so on, it takes up a lot of time, especially when you have to do studying and stuff to prepare for topics and so on. So the donations do come in very, very handy. So, uh, and, and don't think if you're on a platform like Patreon or something like this, the idea of a platform like that is, uh, yes, even if you can only chip in five bucks, six bucks, two bucks, 10 bucks, whatever, the idea of crowdfunding is that if you have a bunch of people, a bunch of people want to support what you're doing, and a bunch of people are all chipping in five bucks, seven bucks, 10 bucks, that adds up very quickly. So the link to uh, Christian Prince's Patreon is in the uh, description box. If you can go and go and sign up as a as a patron. Now here's one I think I'll I'll ask uh, I'll answer real quick, and then Christian Prince, you can you can add if you want to. Um, Ahil here, we have uh, a Muslim over here. And matter of fact, Ahil, if you have some questions for Christian Prince, um, we're happy to answer them. For some reason, he's talking about Koine Greek. He says Koine Greek is Pigeon Greek. LOL, LOL. Why did they not know how to speak proper Greek rather than classical Greek? LOL, LOL, broken Greek Bible. <laughs> now, this comment is so hilarious to anyone who is familiar with the Greek language. Um, you ask, why didn't they know how to speak proper Greek rather than classical Greek? What are, you, what are you talking about? Koine Greek is what people spoke. That was that was language. That was the language that they spoke. Er, the, the classical Greek writers, they wrote in classical Greek. But if you're talking about first century, the first century and the language that people spoke wherever you went, the language that had been spread uh, thanks to Alexander the Great, um, Hellenizing much of the known world at that time, they spoke Koine Greek. So if you're writing your book, if you're writing the Bible and you're writing it, what are you going to write in? Are you going to write in classical Greek? Are you, or are you going to write in the in what everyone speaks? That's Koine Greek. It's just a simpler form of Greek. Um, so just so you know, hope that hope that helps. Broken Greek Bible. <laughs> you, know, you know, David? You know, David? What's up? This guy, this guy is talking about broken language. Uh -huh. I mean, how how he, uh, uh, when Zachary Naik, he speak, why he don't make fun of him when he speaks stupid Arabic and he do not know Arabic? Did that and Zachary Naik, both of them don't speak Arabic. Mm -hmm. Bismillah, the There is an example I will quote for you, a verse from the Quran. And then he's speaking Arabic and only Allah knows what he is saying. I cannot understand the word. I am an Arab. I have no idea what he's saying. So this idiot, he is trying to make fun of people who don't speak good Greek. We do not know who they are. But at but in the, in, in the same time, he is reciting Quran to his God in a language he don't understand. Mm -hmm. The Greek, they recite the Greek. I do not need even to pray in a Greek. But you recite in the language. Nobody knows what it's meant. If I ask you what this word means in the Quran, now he will say only Allah knows best. So shame on you to speak about languages. Even your God, Allah, in the Quran, his languages broken and me and the, the Arab we correct the Quran and we make fun of it um, uh, Christian Prince there's a there's a guy on on YouTube uh, he does his channels called Vidu vids but he does an awesome Zucker Nike impression but yours is better that was a uh, that was yeah. a, that was the best <laughs> that was the best Zucker Nike. by the way everyone Nabil did an awesome Nabil would never do it on stage or anything like that yep. but Nabil could do an awesome Zucker Nike impression as well I uh, should have recorded it at some point, but uh, no, that was that was uh, that was epic there. 
Uh, here, here we have a question from uh, Alan. Alan says, Alan Silva says, guys, uh, can you guys mentor me in apologetics against Islam so I can argue again, uh, so I can argue with my girlfriend's family? So apparently his uh, girlfriend's family is... Uh, Muslim. Uh, but Alan, that's kind of what we do in, in our videos, right? We're trying to mentor people a lot through through our videos. But uh, Christian Prince, if this guy wants to um, talk to his girlfriend's family about Islam and Christianity, uh, what, are the, what are the basic steps that you would recommend? Well, uh, first of all, I don't know why even he have a girlfriend. I mean, pff, how this will end? You will marry, and then your family will be broken. You do not know the children will be Christians or Muslims or what. So I don't, uh, I don't think this is a good idea. Always you have to marry from someone share the same target, the same belief. Otherwise, it's going to be a broken family. Well, we don't, we, we don't actually know here. I mean, uh, he, his girlfriend may may have may be a, an ex Muslim or something like that. He's asking about the family, or she may be Muslim. We don't, yeah, we don't, we don't know at this point. But um, if he wants to actually respond to her family using apologetics, what would you uh, recommend? Well, he can, you know, he can watch your videos. He can get my books. I have many books on, on Amazon. He can watch my videos. They are for free. And, uh, you know, we do our best to teach. This is what we do. So watch our videos, learn from them, uh, take reference and make an argument. But before always you talk about, you, before you open your mouth and speak about a topic, you better educate yourself very well about it. Not only just learn two letters and go and say, hey, I heard this. Because that will be not really a good idea. You have to get like, a, like you know, you don't claim to be a chef uh, if you know only how to make salad. You know, you have to, to know how to make many dishes. So you need to educate yourself very well before you open your mouth about a topic. Mm -hmm. um, we have a question here. Why is the word Pharaoh used in the Quran as a proper name? It lacks the definite article. So it is the name of the Egyptian king from the era of Moses, not a title. Uh, is that correct? Is that a problem? Well, you know, the, the, uh, when the Quran says Pharaoh, and this is appearing more than 61 place, uh, the, the Quran, don't tell us what who is Pharaoh, but it's talking about Pharaoh as a name, as a, this guy, his name is Pharaoh, which is wrong. Mm -hmm. Same time, there's many Pharaohs, which one? Mm -hmm. uh, but the Quran, you know, uh, 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 it's very famous about history mistakes. As an example, uh, the Quran mentioned that uh, Moses he met with the Samari, and I'm sure you are familiar with the uh, with the story where Moses, the the Samar, the the the, the, Sam, the Samarian, they met with Moses and they spoke with him. So obviously, the Quran is not a book of history, and it's mixed up. Mm -hmm. and, they do not, you know, uh, 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 like, uh, uh, you know, uh, Qarun, uh, Qarun, and suddenly uh, the, the uh, Haman, you know, suddenly Haman appear in the Quran as a, as a minister for the Pharaoh. What Haman have to do with the Pharaoh? Uh, Moses and Aaron, they are the uncle of Mr. Jesus in the Quran. So, I mean, who is Jesus there? Even the word Jesus did not appear. There's Mr. Isa. So we have Isa replaced by Jesus in the translation, but this is Mr. Jesus the Muhammad, supposedly. And his uncle is Moses, and his grandfather, his name is Umran. In case you do not know, too, that, that for the people who are listening, the father of Moses, too, his name is Umran. So the Quran is mixed up. It's mixed up. It's, there's nothing mm -hmm do with history we can rely on and this is why we laugh always about the history of the Quran even Muhammad he could not even uh, like uh, 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 David I want you to challenge all the Muslims who are listening who can show us Israel the, the word Israel in the Quran repeated tons of time okay I am reading the Quran and the Quran is the book of God I want to know who is Israel where we can find in the whole Quran who is this guy who his name is Israel we cannot I challenge any Muslim. So how this book is a book of God? And suddenly he jump and he start talking about a guy. His name is Israel. Children of Israel. Children of Israel. Okay, who is Israel? Shouldn't you first introduce to us this person? So Quran is a silly book. It is not the same. You know, in the beginning you said yellow pages. Yellow pages mm -hmm. is better because yellow mm -hmm. pages you have first name, last name, you have an address, and you have a phone number. Mm -hmm. Here there's nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to ask you uh, uh, about that name, Isa, because I, I've read I've read a few theories about the about where that name come from. Came from uh, some people have said that maybe it came it, it came to Arabic through some other through multiple other languages before it got there, and uh, so that's the one that they were using. Um, I've seen uh, maybe it was a special usage because. 
uh, because in the Quran, Allah wanted to combine it as a parallel with, with Musa, so Musa and Isa, uh, I've seen that perhaps the Jews were referring to Jesus as Isa, using the name Esau because they regarded that as an insult. So when the Jews, ref the Jews of Arabia referred to Jesus, they would say Esau, and Muhammad just didn't know, so he picked up the term. Do you have any theories on why it's saying Isa rather than uh, rather than uh, Yasu? You see, the Muslims themselves did not know really how the name came to existence because we as an Arab and all the Arabian Christian history, we never heard of a person whose name is Isa. We call him in Arabic Yeshua. In the Hebrew is Yeshua. So we say in Arabic Yeshua al Messiah. You will not find a single Arabic Christian he used the word Isa. This is only a word created and came through Muhammad. It is possible that maybe the Jews they were insulting, as you said, but really there is no, there is no uh, uh, like a, we cannot find where this is coming from. And remember, David, that Islam is disconnected religion, which means the Muslims uh, today they have nothing to do with Islam in the time of Muhammad. The first book written about Muhammad. It was hundreds of years after Muhammad. There's nothing about Muhammad. You know, we, we, uh, the Quran itself, the one we are reading today, the Quran, they, they're saying that this is according to recitation of Hafs. And Hafs, according to Muslims, he was a fraud. He was a thief. He steal books and he claimed that they are his own. So, And his father was the same. So Hafs, he learned the Quran from his stepfather, Asim. Asim was a fraud, according to Muslims. Asim and Hafs, both of them, their hadith is rejected. So how you accept his Quran? So they don't have Quran. The Quran itself have no roots. So how we can find out where Isa is coming from? And at the same time, the Quran always come to us with a strange names. Okay, who is Yahya? We do not know. Uh, uh, who is, uh, 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 you know, uh, Salih? I mean, names, they are coming from the middle of nowhere. And Muhammad, he inserted them in the Quran. Zul Qurnayn, I'm sure you know about Zul Qurnayn. Mm -hmm. Okay, Zul Qurnayn in Arabic means the, the man with the two horns. Okay, have you ever heard of a guy, his name is the man with the two horn? Why, he's a cow? I mean, give us a name, what's his name? You don't tell me what he's wearing in his head. Have you ever heard, like now, you are wearing a headset, uh, uh, David. I will say the guy with the headset. And then a guy who come after 10,000 years, he will know, he will recognize David Wood because he was wearing a headset. This is, this is stupid. So, when you say the man with the two horns, shouldn't you tell us first who, what his name? What he was? Which country? What language he speak? So, this is a silly book have no roots and it's a collection of fairy tale stories as we said the, the arab they keep saying that to muhammad and muhammad he is just trying to make himself a prophet and okay they ask him the jews they came to him they said okay tell us about zul qurnayn he started telling them uh, uh, first of all he did not answer right away he waited until supposedly jibril came and he told them okay jibril told me the story of zul qurnayn and he started telling us a story about he found the sunset in murky water so Islam is a is a, the Quran is a is a, is not even a good for a six years old low IQ child. Mm -hmm. He will laugh at it. And the the, uh, the the things you're bringing up about you know the Quran not explaining who this person is or uh, not explaining who that person is is actually a, a, a pretty big problem for Islam because Allah claims that this is the book that's explained in detail. It's fully explained. He's given us a book that's fully explained. And if you don't know from some other source or from your own historical knowledge what these things are talking about, you're going to be really confused because we just, it, it's not, it's not fully explained. It's not explained in detail. It's just, yeah. So anyway, rough book. Um, all right. We have, uh, we have a question here and this has come up previously. Uh, Sister Sunshine says, ask Christian Prince about the necrophilia question. So this has come up before that we do, we do have a story about Muhammad crawling down into a grave in a situation. I've never, if I'm being generous, then I would think what? That Muhammad just went and slept beside this woman. Uh, you're reading the sources, so t tell us tell us what this is about. You know, the, the story is saying that Muhammad, when uh, this is about the woman, her name is Fatima bintu Asad, and she is supposedly the mother of Ali. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, when she died, Ali, he came to him and he was uh, crying. And uh, he was crying because simply his mother, she never believed in Muhammad. So Muhammad, he told Ali, don't worry, I'm going to do something. Muhammad, he went to the grave and the women she have nothing. Because, you know, when uh, 
the you know the Arab bef before Islam they have the same tradition. They uh, they make the person you know naked and then they like uh, they put them in the grave. They warp them with a sheet. It's there's no there's no like a, a coffin. It's a sheet. They put them in the grave and then Muhammad he took his clothes and he lay down with her in the grave. And why, according to Muhammad, the, the Arab who was watching, they said to him, whenever you, you, you came with something nobody did before you, why you are doing that? He says, because I want to make the pressure of the grave lighter on her. Now, uh, the story doesn't say that Muhammad did anything wrong, but Muhammad, he took off his clothes and he lay down with the dead woman who is, who is she's wearing nothing. And the excuse is to light the pressure on her grave. But this is contradiction for the Quran. Because the Quran says you pray for them or you don't pray for them, Allah will not forgive them. They are kuffar. So how if Muhammad, he lay down in the grave, the pressure of the grave will be uh, less. This is silly. So Muhammad here is a, uh, either he is a mentally ill, you know, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, he want to he wanna give himself like, a, like I, can make, I can make even the one who go to hell suffer less, even after he, he die, which is stupid to say because you are just a prophet, you are not God. And the pressure of the grave, what does that mean? It's, it's, it's silly, stupid too. So I don't understand really what he, why he did that. And I don't see it. It's about it was really sexual as it was, it was like something crazy and stupid. You know, um, I, I wasn't there to say it was sexual. I can say it is something from somebody who have a mental illness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's so so whether he whether he had sex with her dead body or not, it's just weird. No matter no matter what the situation is, it's just a it's just a weird thing. Yeah, the Arab they said that to him right yeah. away. They said to him, "You did something uh, nobody did before. What is that?" You yeah. know. Mm -hmm. So he, he explained to them that he he uh, uh, he is uh, uh, you know he is trying to make uh, the pressure of the grave uh, less, and this is false, isn't it? Muhammad who says that he asked Allah for forgiveness for his mother, and Allah he reject. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if his mother he could not you know bring mercy for her. How about the mother of somebody else? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, hope that answers your question, Sunshine. And CIN says, I have a question. Uh, who's speaking in Surah 1933? So th that's a that's a famous verse of Jesus. So I guess they want you to talk about uh, 1933. That's a that's a famous verse because Jesus talks about uh, the days he's, he's raised to life. So I'll go ahead and read the verse and then uh, Christian Prince can comment on it. So uh, this is Jesus speaking here. He says, and peace on me on the day I was born and on the day I die and on the day I am raised to life. So why would that be an interesting verse? Uh, you know, because here he says that peace on me when the day I, you know, I'm born and the day I die. And, uh, you know, uh, Muslims, they say that Jesus is still alive. Mm -hmm. So when that peace of when that day of peace is going to be upon Jesus. According to Muhammad, he will come back and he will stay in earth in the, in, before the, in the judgment day for 40 days only, and then he will die. And what peace on me in the day I die mean? I mean, it doesn't make sense. I mean, death is death. It is a peace. I mean, what does that mean? So uh, Muhammad, he, uh, uh, he, he say things nobody understand. And this is why Muhammad in chapter 5, verse 101 said, ask no questions. Because verse number 102, it says, why not? Because if you do, you will leave Islam. Mm -hmm. So ask no questions. I say things nobody knows what it means, it's ex including me. Now, if Jesus is going to come in the judgment day, shouldn't we ask the Muslims why? Why? Mm -hmm. Why not Muhammad? Muhammad is the last prophet. Why Allah did not? Muhammad was killed by poison. Why Allah, he saved Jesus from a cross. He did not save Muhammad from the poison. So all the questions, the second you ask a question about Muhammad, or about Jesus in Islam, everybody go in trouble and they have no answer and they will say to you, Allah knows best. And this mm -hmm. is the best answer they can give it to you, Allah knows best. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, we have a, a comment from a, a Muslim here who says, the Quran talks about Christians with respect. And it does. I mean, you've got Allah saying that Christians are closest in love to the Muslims. So we've got the Quran talking about Christians with respect. What do you? What do you? Is that is that correct, Christian Prince? Well, the Quran uh, uh, insults the Christians all over, and he say we are mushrikeen. We are the worst of the creatures. We are worse than animals. 
uh, Allah, he hate us, chapter 5, verse 14. Uh, chapter 5, verse 51, Allah says, take not Christians and Jews as a friends. Uh, uh, so when a Muslim, he says, uh, uh, Quran, respect the Christian, that is really funny. Uh, so w why Allah, he will spread hate between us and why we are the worst of the creatures. And when he say uh, uh, in, in, uh, uh, in the Quran, uh, like the Christian and the Jews, they can only friends to each other. And the one who is a friend to the Christian and the Jews, as in chapter 5, verse 51, to the Christian or the Jews, he is unjust and he is a bad person. He is he is evil doer. So when a Muslim says, Quran, respect us, show us where. I, mean, I want to see that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you, you know, the Muslim, what they do, they show you verses Muhammad, he said in the beginning of his life. Mm -hmm. Like in chapter 5, verse 50, uh, 69, Muhammad, he says, in the ladina amanu wal ladina hadu wa sabi'una wa nasara, well, etc. Those who believe and those who they are Jews and Sabi and An Nasara, they will go to heaven. This is mm -hmm. in the beginning. But later, Muhammad, he says uh, in chapter 5, verse number 72, the same chapter, just a few verses after, Kuffar, they are Kuffar, those who say, Allah, He is the Messiah, the son of Mary. Yeah? So he called us Kuffar. In chapter 5, verse number 82, this is the verse he is quoting for us. This is a verse not saying that we are good. No. You see, look, Muhammad, uh, we mentioned uh, like the guy who asked about, uh, uh, he want to talk about a uh, Christian sect. Muhammad, he was trying to, uh, um, what they call it, divide and conquer. So chapter 5, verse 82, he was saying, oh, the Christians are close to us. The Jews are the enemy. So he was trying to say to the Christians, don't worry, I'm going to kill the Jews only. Mm -hmm. And later, after he finished with the Jews, he switched to the killing the Christians. Mm -hmm. The chapter of the Tawbah actually happened after all, after he killed all the Jews, not before. He finished with the Jews and he finished with all the enemies and suddenly he came with the Tawbah, 929 uh, says, fight those who don't believe in Allah. He meant specifically the Christians and he decided to attack the Roman in Tabuk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so so everyone, when, when you're when you're looking at Quran verses and you think, oh, that sounds nice, so you have to uh, you have to kind of try and piece those together in order. When Muhammad starts out as a prophet, uh, it was according to him, it's hey, I'm Muhammad, and the Muslims are with the Jews, and we're with the Christians. It's all of us monotheists together against the polytheists, the idolaters. And then he moves to Medina, the Jews reject him. And then, hey guys, it's it's me, the Muslims and the Christians, and we're together against the Jews and the polytheists. They're the enemies here. And then by the end, as Christian Prince pointed out, it's it's fight, it's fight everyone. It's, it's, it's Islam versus everyone. So uh, my Muslim friends, uh, that may work with you know your Christian friend down the street. If you're talking to Christian prince, you're not gonna you're not gonna pull off the the Quran talked about Christians with respect. It's just not gonna work here. So uh, get a better get a better position. You know, David. Yeah. What about to say to him? I want to say to you, you are kafir. Let us see what he will do. Let us say I'm going to say to you, you are najis, isn't it, Muhammad? He says that the Christian, the Jews, all who don't believe in Allah are najis. Najis yeah. means filthy, filthy. dirty. Mm -hmm. So if I call you najis now, is that respect? I mean, they say silly stuff. Those things can work with those who do not know. Yeah. Don't try those tricks with us. You have no idea you are talking to who. Um, here's a good one. Uh, here's a good one, Christian Prince. I'd actually, I, I, I would join this man as well in hearing your thoughts on this. Um, he says, Christian Prince, do you think that Muhammad received a satanic revelation and believed his message? Or do you think he simply saw prophethood as a way to gain power and knowingly created a fabrication? So was, was Muhammad sincere, but he was deceived by evil spirits? Or did he know what he was doing? Uh, you know, uh, we can say both, but I believe strongly if you go to Sahih Muslim, you will see Aisha in hadith number 1464. She said, Inna ila hawaka ya Muhammad. I see that your Lord, your Allah, he just trying to satisfy your sexual needs. You know, she's talking about his sexual. He make a verse saying, any woman she want to give herself to the Prophet so the Prophet, he can sleep with her. So even the household, uh, uh, who live in the household of Muhammad Aisha, his favorite child wife, she got him busted. I see that your Lord, he has hastened for your desire. What desire are we talking about? Sexual desire. So it's very clear that in the time of Muhammad, people didn't notice that this guy, he is God. He is the God. He is the one. God is just a puppet. He used him so he can control. 
So he have mental issue. I can tell from many issues. But as an example, he have a low IQ. You know, once uh, 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 a, a guy he came to his uh, to his house and he is blind. He ordered the wives to cover themselves, and he they said to him, "But isn't it him blind?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Muhammad he got busted. So he said to them, "Well, are you blind too?" But you are asking them to cover themselves. I mean. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, this is this is telling you that he is he he have a low IQ. If you read the chapter of eighteen in the Quran, there's no way anyone he have a little intelligence he will say and he will make such a chapter. The whole chapter is a joke. So, Muhammad he have a low IQ, but he can be fit for that time for those Bedouin who live in the desert. They are not educated, but he could not convince the educated Jews and Nasara. In his time, and this is why they rejected him. Muhammad he said, "If I was able to convert ten Jews only, the whole Jews would convert." Which means he could not convert ten Jews. You believe it? Ten mm-hmm. Jews, he could not make them believe. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, next question is from uh, Jack Sparrow. He says, "David, please ask Christian Prince how does the Shahada sound before Muhammad?" So there is a Shahada before Muhammad. So how does this sound? You know, first of all, the shahada is something uh, funny because, uh, uh, you know, the word shahada in Arabic is witness. So how you can witness for something you did not see? And the, uh, you will see that the Quran says that Allah himself, he says shahada. So shahid Allahu alla ilaha illahu wal malaika, chapter 3, verse number 18. So Allah himself, he says shahada. Okay, Allah, he says shahada to who? So the, the, the shahada... I believe it was uh, uh, Muhammad. He is trying to enforce himself on people to agree that he's a prophet, and he want them to declare it. Otherwise, you die. And then, because if you declare it, people will hear it, and then you, there is no way to return. You will be rejected by your tribe, by your family, because you declare that you are a, you are following Muhammad. So shahada it was a way to sign in in the army of Muhammad with the point of no return. Because there is two issues here to risk. If you leave, Muhammad will kill you. And if you join your family, they will reject you. The Arab, the tribes, they will not like you no more because you join the gang of Muhammad. Muhammad is not is not a really a, a, the Arab. They never saw saw him as a, 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 as a prophet. They saw him as a, a gang member. Like as an example, there's a hadith to speak about the word Sahariq. Muhammad he said. In Sunan Ibn Dawood, which is a Sahih Hadith, he said, Abshiru ya ya ma'ashara sa'arik. For those who speak Arabic, they knew what sa'arik mean. Sa'arik mean the outlaw. Like, you know, when you speak about a bunch of criminals who they are running away in the wood for they are wanted for raping, killing. So sa'arik are a, a group of people who they are rejected by their tribes, not from one tribe. And then they live in the desert. And then they make a gang together and they attack the people who traveled, became pirates. So Muhammad, he called his own people Sa'ari, which is an insult. Like, if you say to anyone now in Arabic, you are a Sa'aluk, he will kill you. So how Muhammad, he says to the Muslim, you, Abshiru ya ma'ashara Sa'ari. The Muslim, they translate that in the hadith, they say, a, 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 a group of poor immigrants, that's a lie. Sa'ari mm. is not a poor immigrant. It is the criminals who they are rejected mm. from their families for crimes they did. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. All right. Um, next one. This is from Bram. He says, talk about the crucifixion of Jesus in Islam, Surah 4, verse 157. So what's your what's your take on that? There, there, there are multiple takes on this as far as, um, you know, even according to Muslims over the years, whether this is saying that Jesus wasn't crucified or whether this is simply saying that he wasn't killed by the Jews or whether it's saying that, you know, even though he was killed, it wasn't... You, you weren't the ones that killed them. Um, so what's your what's your take on Surah? So just so everyone knows, uh, Surah 4, verse 157, this is where we have uh, that the Jews are boasting that they killed, uh, they killed Christ Jesus. And uh, the Quran says, but they, they killed him not, nor did they crucify him, but so it was made to appear to them. Uh, what's your take on that, Christian Prince? Well, this is a very important verse. I advise the Christians to learn carefully and listen carefully for the answer. This verse confirms something very important. Number one, that the Jews, they 
confirm their killing to Jesus. Number two, Allah is saying that they killed Jesus, but the fake Jesus, which means the Bible is telling us a true story. Because if I am witnessing a crucifixion of someone, Allah, he made him look exactly like Jesus. And then John and Peter and all the disciples of Jesus, they witness that we we witness the death and the crucifixion of Jesus. The Quran is saying Allah, he made him look like Jesus. So the Christian, the apostle of Jesus, they witness for the truth, for what they saw, which means the Bible is saying the truth because a true witness is the one who say what he saw, not what somebody else after 600 years will say to us. I saw this, I write this, this is honesty. So the Quran confirmed that what is written in the Christian book is absolutely correct. That they witnessed and they saw Jesus being crucified. And then Allah, he sent after 600 years, someone to say, ah, 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 it was not Jesus, this is a child, this and this is stupid. But by this, the Quran confirmed that our story is a true story. And mm -hmm. now, Muslims, you tell me how they can confirm somebody he never witnessed Jesus, he never spoke to Jesus, he don't, he don't even know the language of Jesus, he don't even know the name of Jesus. And yet he can tell us what happened to Jesus. Why? Because he have somebody came to him and he squeezed him three times like a mayonnaise and he told him that, oh, they did not kill the Messiah. It was someone looked like him. All right. Uh, I assume this comment is a joke, but on the slim chance that it's not, I'm going to go and post it. Uh, YS says, hello, I want to donate $1 million right now. Is it possible to send $1 million as a donation? Let me know so I can do it now. Well, if you're talking about uh, to Christian Prince here, well, uh, I don't know if you can you can no, I, send a, I a donation I, that big, but no, I, I don't want Patreon. million dollar. I, I don't want it, uh, David. D give it to David. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you want to, you can divide it up. You can give half. Go to go to Christian Prince's. Look, just go to Christian Prince's um, uh, Patreon uh, page. The link is in the description box. You can give him whatever you want. You can find my info. Uh, <laughs> if you want uh, back to this comment from a Muslim, he says, uh, I have no problem with Christians as a Muslim. Well, uh, my take would be that that's great that you don't have a problem with Christians as a Muslim. But my understanding is that Allah has a problem with us and Muhammad had a problem with us. And because Allah and Muhammad had a problem with us and the rightly guided caliphs had a problem with us and 14 centuries worth of muslim scholars have had a problem with us that there's still a problem with us so uh christian prince how would you respond to a muslim who just you know, says he has no problem with us how he say i'm a muslim and i have no problem with the christians that's mean you are a hypocrite because if you are a muslim you believe in the book of allah and the book of allah says in chapter 5 verse 51 Take not Christians and Jews as a friends. Even the Quran in chapter 9 verse 23 says you cannot even take your father and your brother from your blood as a friend. So either you are a hypocrite playing taqiyya on us, think that we are a bunch of fools who do not know your book, or you yourself, you have no idea what Islam is about. You are just born of a Muslim family. Your name is Muhammad and you think you are a Muslim. Choose one. Which one is you? I don't know. Yeah, I have to say, um, to, to the Muslims who are watching and thinking, hey, you know, I get along with, with Christians, I get along with everyone, I don't have any problem with them. Um, look, it's great that most Muslims live better lives than their religion commands them to live. And it's great that most Muslims live better lives than their prophet live. Um, but we're not talking about we're not talking about nice Muslims who, who just don't follow Muhammad's teachings. We're talking about what the Muslim sources say. So uh, even though, even though you have no problem with us, again, your, your God definitely has a problem with us and your prophet definitely had a problem with us. And that's why um, followers of your God and your prophet have been uh, killing Christians and lots of other people uh, for a very long time. <clears throat> um, wait a minute. <laughs> wait. Now, the, the same guy, Christian Prince, I, I scrolled down to his next comment to what it, see what he was going to say. Um, but it's the same guy said he has no problem with Christians. And he says, but I just asked Christians not to call Jesus God. So he's saying he has no problem with us. Just don't call Jesus God. And what if we, if we call Jesus God, what will happen? What next? <laughs> what he would do? <laughs> yeah. I, I, what, what's the plan there? He would do jihad? Yeah. <laughs> oh, actually, I should have. I should have. I should have put a link, and I'll uh, if I 
No, I will. Uh, after this show, um, first and last year said Christian Prince has books available on Amazon. Be sure to check them out as they are filled with invaluable information. I'll add those to the description box after the show. So if you're watching this in a replay afterwards, the links will be there. Uh, but Christian Prince, why don't you tell us about the books that you've written? Well, you know, my books is uh, uh, actually, uh, you know, the Muslims, they say to me, well, if you are a person who know a lot, how come we never heard of a book you have? So I said, okay, I'm going to give you books. So I start writing books. So it was the Muslims who gave me the idea, and they are the Muslims who invited me to do so. Uh, my books is like, a, a, you know, a, a box of a lot of information. There is no, uh, you know, it's not just a book. You know, those who have my books, they, 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 they knew. Uh, I just released uh, uh, a, a two volume, a Sex and Allah, and the whole two books is about sexuality in Islam, and in, for the Arab, before Islam, and after Islam. So my book simply is a collection of information hard to reach for those who don't speak Arabic and even for those who speak Arabic because I never saw actually even those who speak Arabic is the last one to know too because not everybody speak Arabic. He read and he study and he research. So my books is an easy, easy access with a translation for a lot of information people never heard of from those who speak Arabic and those who never know Arabic. So, uh, and you can ask people who have my books what they think about it. For sure, the Muslims don't like my books, you know, they hate it, and they give it a bad review before, it, without buying it, which is not really normal, you know. <laughs> now, aren't you, aren't you simply telling them what's in the Muslim sources? Why would they be, why wouldn't they be, uh, be super happy over that? You see, I do my videos, I show the reference in the screen, I read the screen for them, everybody see it, and yet still they call me liar. So Muslim, when he sees something very, very, I mean, let us say upsetting, something uh, show something really crazy about their religion, the only the only thing they can do, either they leave Islam or they go, they go in denial and they say liar, liar, liar. So I hear always liar. I heard it from many people and many of them, by the way, they accepted the Christ and they left Islam. But in the beginning, they say liar because it's shocking. It is, it is really disgusting. What are you talking about? This is my prophet, the mm -hmm. prophet I love. I heard the good news about him. You know, David, you do not live in the Middle East. If you go in the Middle East, you go to the bedroom, you hear the Quran, because, because they play it in the, in the speakers, you know, in the, in the loudspeakers. You go to the bathroom, even in the bathroom, you hear the Quran. You open your TV, everybody's speaking about the amazing, the most uh, prophet Muhammad. You open your radio, it's the same. You go in the bus, it's the same. You drive your car, it's the same. You go to the school, it's the same. So wherever you go, there's one guy, you, you see like, uh, like you know, uh, a certain time that the American movies have only Sylvester Stallone. So Muhammad is the only Sylvester Stallone for the last 14 centuries. Mm -hmm. So how dare you to say something we never heard of? So they got shocked, they got so upset, but slowly they understand that this guy is not lying, it's true, he's showing us, it's in the front of us. Mm -hmm. and they will accept, yep. sooner or later. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it, and and sometimes sometimes it could take a while. Um, I, I'll see. I, I'll post just a, a simple video where I put the the Muslim sources up on the screen about Muhammad ordering his followers to kill lizards or ordering his followers to kill dogs or something like that. And a Muslim will immediately comment and say, "No, we're not allowed to kill. We're not allowed to kill animals at all in Islam." And it's like I, I just put the sources on the screen in English and Arabic, and you're saying it's not true. This is your prophet talking. Kill lizards, and you're saying. He doesn't allow you to kill anything. He commanded you not to kill anything. And so, and then if you point out, look, it's right there. I have people, I have Muslims tell me all the time that I'm, I'm printing up my own volumes of hadiths. I'm making stuff up. I make stuff up and then I print up. I don't know. I don't know what kind of time they think I have on my hands, but I print up my own fake editions of hadiths so that I can point to them and say that this is what Muhammad said. And uh, it's just amazing that, you know, a Muslim will hear something from his mom when he's growing up. And then when you show him that his prophet said the exact opposite, he'll stick with what his mom said and accuse you of, of making it up, even though it, it's not hard to go on a Muslim website and look up, uh, look up these sources. Interesting stuff. Um, all right. Uh, someone asked, what, what's the Islamic concept of an apostle? What is an Islamic apostle? Uh, if Muhammad's an apostle is Isa. Jesus an Islamic apostle as well. Uh, I don't know what what they mean by apostle. Are you talking about like a messenger? Uh, yeah, he's talking so, some some yeah some some Quran translations will translate it as apostle, and other others will will translate it as as messenger. 
Yeah, well, uh, there's no, like, you know, apostle is, should not really appear as a translation. It should come always either, either as a Nabi, which means a prophet, or a messenger. Mm -hmm. uh, because Muslims, they make a differentiation between a prophet and the messenger, which is very silly too. Because how you can be a messenger but not a prophet? You know, mm -hmm. the second you deliver a message from God, that is a prophecy from God. And, uh, and, and God himself is the first prophet because the, the, true, the true prophet is God. He is the one who prophesies about the future. And the rest, they carry the prophecy. So Muslims, they have a very uh, uh, funny understanding that there's, there's a messenger and there's a prophet. And Muhammad is both of them. He's a messenger and he's a prophet in the same time. But here, uh, David, maybe you can ask the Muslims who they are in the crowd, can somebody give us a prophecy of the prophet Muhammad in the Quran? Mm -hmm. Like what? What I mean, a, what about the uh, what about the war between the uh, the Romans and the Persians? What do you think of that? If you go in the hadith, I just made a video about it a few days ago. Oh yeah, oh that's cool. It, yeah, it, it's it says that uh, this hadith, re, this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, verse was revealed after the after they won, not be, not before. <laughs> hmm. You know, so Muhammad he uh, uh, Muhammad he said that verse after. Uh, after the Roman, they won the war. Secondly, if you go and study, uh, uh, you know, uh, let, let us go first to the hadith. Just, just let me get the reference. And mm -hmm. this is Sahih. This is Sahih. Uh, okay, let me let me give you the link, uh, 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 David. Maybe you can read it there. Is that okay? Um, I'll give it to you in Skype. You, maybe you can open it, and you can read it better than me. You know, so you can have the reference uh, or, or for people who can read it. Okay. It says it clearly there that when the Roman, the big team victorious, this verse came. Oh, I got it. All right. All right. So, yep, this is Sahih. <clears throat> Jamia Termidi. Abu Sa'id narrated, on the day of Badr, the Romans had a victory over the Persians. So the believers were pleased with that. Then the following was revealed. The Romans have been defeated up to his saying, the believers will rejoice with the help of Allah. He said, so the believers were happy were happy with the victory of the Romans over the Persians. So how this can be a prophecy? The, the verse came after they won the war. How this is going to be a prophecy? This is stupid. I mean, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. That's what it says. So they won, the Roman, they won. And Muhammad, he said, the Roman, they were victorious. So what is the prophecy? Same time, even if this hadith does not exist, we still we get them busted because Muhammad, he used in the Arabic the word Bada. And the word Bada is between three to nine. And the final victory, uh, the, the, the Roman, they lost Jerusalem in 614. And the final victory, it was uh, uh, 28 and 29. So Muhammad is still, he got busted either way. Either if it is, the, he, he, he did he say that before they won, or if he say that after they won. But imagine after Trump he won, I say, let me give you a prophecy. One, he won, and the Republican will rejoice. That's mm -hmm. funny. He won mm -hmm. already. He won a year ago, in the year 2016. So the, the hadith in front of you is very clear. Same time, there is a question, and no Muslims can answer, why the Muslims will rejoice for the Roman victory. Isn't it the Roman or Kuffar? Mm -hmm. Why they will rejoice for the victory of the Roman? What they have to do with the Roman? Hmm. So, and, and and by the way, everyone, uh, uh, Christian Prince, uh, as far as I know, this is the main prophecy that Muslims go to. So you're saying that they're the main one they go to when we when we ask them uh, about a prophecy here, it fails completely. Absolutely, it's a stupid in either way, uh, because the the years. If, if if you see this hadith here, if we say it's not exist. But they cannot say it doesn't exist. It's sahih, as you see. So the, the Roman, they were victorious. And then the following verse was revealed. It's very clear. So it, it's revealed after they've been victorious, not before. Secondly, the, 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 in Arabic it says, uh, uh, room, And then it says, uh, so, uh, So it's going, they are going to be victorious in, in, in the word Bada, three to nine. And the Roman took them long, a lot longer than what Muhammad he predicted. Mm -hmm. So either we go that Muhammad, he, he was predicting before, and that will make him look as a false prophet. Or we say, as the hadith here, which is sahih, supposedly, saying that the verse revealed after the Roman were victorious, and that will destroy all the claim anyway. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of, 
even if we granted a a everything that Muslims claim about this, if we ignore the hadith you mentioned and so on, and we ignore the the, the time the time frame uh, that the time frame was not met, uh, even if we ignore all of that and we say, okay, Muhammad predicted this side would win a victory in the future, and they did. It's kind of a really weak weak prophecy when you know you've got battles and they're going back and forth the wars are going back and forth and so on that would that would be like me saying ladies and gentlemen the republicans won the presidency but at some point the democrats will win the presidency again and then eventually when the the democrats win i say ah you see there i'm a prophet ladies and gentlemen no one would accept that and yet this is the one they go to along with all the other problems yeah, that, this is a war happening for 300 years and they win and they lose and they win. They lose. This is silly. Mm -hmm. Same time, you know, Muhammad, he claimed uh, that the Roman, uh, they will be the major, the major population of uh, the, the people of the, uh, of, uh, uh, of, the, of the earth. So, okay, well, Muhammad, he made a prophecy about the Roman uh, and let us see what it is. When Muhammad, he says, and this is in Sahih Muslim, that the Roman, when the judgment did come, they will be the major population of mankind. And this is hadith number 2898A. So, تَقُومُ السَّاعَ وَالرُّومُ أَكْثَرُ nas. The judgment day will come, and the Roman, they will be the most biggest population of mankind. They are the majority. So, but the Roman are gone. Where is the Roman? Do you know where is the Roman, uh, David? Mm -mm. Where is the Roman now? Here we go. This is a false prophecy. Mm -hmm. If one prophecy made by a prophet who claimed, claimed to be claimed to be prophet, that's it. He's a false prophet. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, and there there are other prophecies that Muhammad made where I just can't figure out how they can possibly um, how they can possibly come true now. So, for instance, Sahih Bukhari uh, seventy one sixteen narrated Abu Huraira. Allah's messenger said. The hour will not be established till the buttocks of the women of the tribe of Daus move while going around Dul Kalasa. But that, that place was destroyed by, by Muslims a long time ago. So it's never going to happen. They're, the people of that, the women of that tribe are not going to be marching around this place um, anymore. And you have, you, have, you have passages like that where it doesn't look like they could ever come true unless this tribe makes a comeback and then you know goes back to its practices and starts walking around and rebuilds this place that that uh, Muhammad's followers destroyed. Uh, then you got others which, I mean, if Muslims really really take their prophet's words seriously, they should be going and trying to confirm them. So let me give an example. Sahih Bukhari seventy one nineteen, narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's messenger said, "Soon the river." Euphrates will disclose the treasure of the mountain of gold. So who, uh, so whoever will be present at that time should not take anything of it. So according to Muhammad, there's a mountain of gold below the Euphrates, a giant mountain. So if Muslims think this guy's a real prophet, they should really be dig They should take some metal detectors out and be at the Euphrates and find this giant mountain of gold. They'd be, they'd be rich forever. Well, uh, as long as you mentioned the, the Euphrates, uh, do you know where the Euphrates is coming from, according to Muhammad? Where's that? It's coming from heaven. When Muhammad, he went to the seven heaven, he found that the roots of the, the rivers, Sihan and Jihan, and Euphrates and the Nile, those are four rivers are known. And all of them, they are coming from the Jannah. And this is, this is, this is Sahih. This is not, uh, you know, this is uh, like, uh, you can go even to Sahih al-Bukhari. Uh, let us me uh, five six uh, one ten. So uh, uh, just type type the word Euphrates in Sunnah.com, you know, and you will see they see the reference. So uh, there is four rivers, two of them appear and two of them underneath. And he asked Jibril, who are they, those those rivers? Jibril told him, that those are the rivers the Euphrates and the Nile, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, oh, this is a lie. I mean, this is obviously it's a lie. So if Muhammad is a prophet, he prophesied lies. What about the Quran? When the Quran prophesied that, that the man have a sperm coming from the backbone, this is a prophecy. It's something supposedly we do not know. Mm -hmm. And this is the Quran. They cannot say it's a weak Quran. So, you know, uh, uh, chapter 86, verse number 6 and 7, it says, uh, 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 from the backbone and the ribs of the women, not only the ribs, the location of the necklace, the word taraib, 
is the location where the women have like if you if a woman she put her uh, like if she is wearing a cross and it's uh, it is kind of short is going to around tight her neck and that location where the cross will uh, will, will set is exact what we are talking about you know what i mean like the 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 touch between the ribs and your neck you know the the hole there this is exactly where muhammad he claimed that women they have a sperm and the it's coming from there and mm-hmm. the man have a sperm and coming from the backbone what about the chapter of the moon where he said that the judgment day is near and the moon is split the moon did not split it was the eclipse and we can show the reference from the hadith he was afraid each time he see eclipse he think it's a doom day and same time he said the moon is split and judgment day is near so moon splitting is a sign of judgment day but that was 1400 years ago and this is a false prophecy uh, we go we can go uh, uh, you know over and over all the Quran is full of crazy stuff one lie will make you co- will make you be called a liar so how about having hundreds of them all over the book mm-hmm. um, so uh, uh, wanted to bring up something to you because you mentioned it earlier that the Quran is uh, affirming what happened with Jesus in, in the Christian position. Uh, Sam Shimon and I use a lot what we call the Islamic dilemma that the Quran affirms. And I'm, I'm bringing this up because I scrolled past a comment. Um, I don't, I don't, I could go back and find it. But um, uh, someone was saying that the position of the Quran is that uh, we, uh, it's the verse from Surah 2 where it says that we, uh, it, well, it's talking about the Jews and it says, woe to those who write the book with their own hand and so on. But what is what is the Quran's position on the previous scriptures, the Torah and the gospel? Because every Muslim that, that you ever run into pretty much believes that the position of the Quran is that Allah revealed the Torah and the gospel. They were corrupted by Jews and Christians, and that's why Allah sent the Quran to basically uh, give us an uncorrupted revelation what what do you what do you think is the actual position of the Quran in other words if you just read the Quran beginning to end what would you believe about the scriptures of the Jews and Christians okay uh, if we go in the Quran uh, David how many times we hear the Quran keep saying the people of the book a bunch a lot, right? okay mm-hmm. so let me let me ask you and you know I, 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 I there is something I notice about you that you are very really I can say you are sharp you know you are smart can you call me an Arab Yep. When I'm not? No. You cannot. So can you call me uh, uh, an Indian if I am not? No. So when you call me the people of the book, it means they have a book. Mm-hmm. So how they are called people of the book in the time of Muhammad. And we are called people of the book today. Yet we don't have a book according to the Muslims. This mm-hmm. is how silly this religion is. Mm-hmm. It's like saying to you, the guy with the car, but he don't have a car. Mm-hmm. It's like saying to you, the guy who have hair, but he don't have a hair. So this is how silly. Same time, the Quran full of verses speaking about the Quran confirming what is with us. And you mentioned, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, like, you know, uh, confirming what is with them. Uh, as an example, chapter 2, verse number 89, it says, mm-hmm. Approving, confirming, believing in what is with them, mm-hmm. not for them. So, and uh, chapter two, verse number ninety-one, same. Chapter two, verse one hundred one, it's it says the same. Uh, chapter two, verse number two thirteen, it, it says the same. So, you know, all all the uh, uh, all over the Quran, we find the same reference. But the Muslims, they cannot find really anything. It says that the Bible is corrupt. You see, the Muslim, they says. Uh, the Quran says, uh, What does that mean? You go to the interpretation, they say, they change the meaning of it. This is their scholars, not me. Mm-hmm. They, it doesn't say they are corrupt in the book. It says they change the, in, the interpretation of it. And that actually was, if you remember the story where Muhammad, he took an oath on the Torah. You remember? Mm-hmm. Okay. The, the, a, a Jewish guy, he put his finger over the word stone okay stone them the punishment of stoning so this is what is the the the, the, the this is what the verse is talking about but this is how how that, how that can be corruption you know mm-hmm. the corruption is supposedly here happened because the guy he tried to hide the word in the torah and if it is corrupted and muhammad he knew the book is corrupted 
uh, where is the hadith where Muhammad he says the Quran the, the Bible is corrupted I want to see it same time the Quran never says you know uh, what they are claiming to be and even their scholars don't agree with them because how in one verse you says you approve what is with them in the other verse he says they are corrupting but they are corrupting the word same time you you and which means changing the location if you go to chapter 5 verse number 41 maybe you can read it for people mm -hmm. there i will give you a, a, a like a little bit of time to find it in chapter 5 verse number 41 it says that corruption here is a change in the location of the words from its location does it say that uh, david um uh, so 541, O Messenger Muhammad, let not those who hurry to fall into disbelief grieve you of such who say we believe with their mouths, but their hearts have no faith. And of the Jews are men who listen much and eagerly to lies, listen to others who have not come to you. They change the words from their places. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the corruption here is not taking the verses. Mm -hmm is changing the words from their places all right now if this is corruption that's mean the whole quran is corrupt because a chapter of uh, uh, you know we just mentioned how the quran says today i completed your religion for you right mm -hmm. the muslims they agree that the first chapter was given to muhammad is now number 96. so if it changing the words from its place will make corruption that's mean the quran is the first one to be called corrupt book mm -hmm. because the whole quran is messed up this is not how muhammad received the quran even according to muslims mm -hmm. so here there's nowhere it says that they took the verses out of the, the bible always mm -hmm. says some of it but if you go to the interpretation it says that they change the meaning they do not really take it not literally they change it from it's a and this is the story about the jewish guy mm -hmm. who put his hand over the verse where it says a stone into death mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and yeah, and just so everyone knows, read that entire passage, everyone. Uh, uh, we just went to Surah 5, verse 41, but the entire passage that follows, especially verses 43 and 47, and then 48, uh, they they basically give an outline of, of the, the true position of the Quran. So when, when uh, the Jews come up to Muhammad to settle a dispute, Allah gives a response in verse 43 that... Um, they don't need you, Muhammad. They don't need you, Muhammad, because they've got the Torah. And if they don't judge by the Torah, then they're in trouble. So the position now notice that would make no sense if the if the Torah has been corrupted, then they would need Muhammad to correct them. But the, instead, it's, hey, Muhammad, they don't need you. They've got the Torah. Then in verse 47, Christians are supposed to judge by the gospel. And then verse 48, and Muslims judge by the Quran. So the position of the Quran is that each group has its book that it's supposed to judge by. Unfortunately for Islam, Muslims eventually went to the Torah and the gospel and realized they don't line up with, uh, with Muhammad. That should have been that should have been the clear proof that you need that you're dealing with a false prophet. Instead, you just said, oh, I guess they corrupted it, contrary to everything that Allah has said in uh, in the Quran. You know, and uh, uh, David, mm -hmm. what about verse number uh, 68, chapter 5, verse number 68? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, does awesome. It, doesn't it say that uh, you people of the book, you should uh, uh, practice, mm -hmm. you should follow the Torah and the Bible? Okay. Yeah, it says we have no, no ground to stand upon if we do not stand upon the yeah. Torah and the gospel. So how we don't have a book and we uh, the Quran is saying to us we have to follow that book that's really stupid I mean mm -hmm. <laughs> give yeah. us the book mm -hmm. yeah guys so so j going back to what Christian uh, Christian Prince was saying earlier that the uh, that the Quran repeatedly calls us the people of the book calls Jews and Christians the people of the book right so it's talking about a book that we have um, according to what Muslims are saying today our book was already corrupted. Well, that would have to mean it, when when Allah is calling us the people of the book, then it must be doing so in an insulting fashion, according to what Muslims are telling us, right? When it calls us the people of the book, it would be calling us people of the corrupt book, right? People of the distorted book, or something like that. But that's not what the Quran says. And so, going through the other passages that that Christian Prince brought up, the Quran is affirming the book that we have. And so, guys, you just have a problem here, and you need to recognize it. every Muslim wants to believe that the Torah and the Gospel have been corrupted because they know that the Torah and the Gospel do not line up with Islam. So they have to say it's been corrupted. But as soon as you say it's been corrupted, you're telling us that you're, you know more than your God because your God didn't know and your prophet didn't know. So you are greater in knowledge than your God. And so maybe you guys should be worshiping yourselves since you know more than your God.
You know, uh, uh, David, why the Muslim don't tell us why Allah he wrote the whole Torah to Moses in his hand? The Muslim don't believe in the Ten Commandments alone. Mm -hmm. They believe that Allah he wrote the whole Torah in his hand on tablet, on tablet. Okay, what was the purpose if he will not protect the Torah at least? I mean, why? How many load of trucks uh, Moses he need to carry the whole Torah? Imagine the mm -hmm. whole Torah written in, in in rocks. So Allah wrote it by His hand, and then that Allah, you know, he, that's it. Everything is gone. Mm -hmm. So the Muslims they have tons of stories. Uh, the, the whole story is that okay, you cannot we cannot find uh, Muhammad in your books, so we don't accept your book. As simple as that. Mm -hmm. If we put Muhammad there, if you add now, if you if you print a new Bible. Fabricate a new Bible and make Muhammad there. They will Muslims all of them. They will accept it uh, like as an example There is a very famous uh, 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 Book the the Muslims the, uh, the the gospel of Barnabas, right? Yeah, okay, but this this book is stupid I mean the, the, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a 13 to 15th century Forgery that was written in Italian. I mean, it's written. It's written. Not only that, this book yeah. is saying that Muhammad himself is Jesus himself. Muhammad mm -hmm. himself is the Messiah. So yeah. the Muslim they speak big mouth about it, but then nobody read it. But just because the name of Muhammad is there, supposedly they like it and they promote it and they made article about it, but none of them will accept it because they are hypocrite. Mm -hmm. If you accept the book, okay, I challenge you to publish it and accept it as this is the true Bible for mm -hmm. the Muslims. Mm -hmm. But they will not do that because they knew it's a fabrication and this is the sign of the hypocrisy when somebody says to you i like to eat shish kebab but i will never order it mm. you know mm. he will never order it but he like to eat it so how come you like this book but you will never order it to be your book in the library to teach your children mm -hmm. mm? because yep. he's yeah mm -hmm. Um, all right, so we've got about we'll uh, we we want to cut off by ten o'clock, so we got about twenty minutes left. Uh, here's a good uh, question from the apostate prophet. You know the apostate prophet, Christian Prince? Yes, yes. The apostate prophet says, "Could it be?" So he's going back to the crucifixion of Jesus. Um, actually, he probably posted it back when we were. I'm way behind on comments. I'm only like halfway scrolled through the comments. Um, but he said, so this is probably when we were talking about the crucifixion earlier. He said, could it be that Islam's assertion that Jesus didn't die is a poor appeasement of local Christian heretics that believed in something similar, e.g. only his body died. Greetings and respect to you both. So, uh, just so, just so everyone knows, um, there were certain heretical Christian groups who had, uh, different beliefs about Jesus, um, that, uh, that he didn't really have a body, um, things like that. So do you think this could be Muhammad being influenced by or trying to appease some local heretical Christians in Surah 4, verse 157? Yeah, there is there is some uh, some books is rejected where he's speaking that the Messiah, for he is a son of God, there is no way the Father will let him be tortured. So uh, uh, it most likely this one was in the cross. God, he made... Uh, uh, the body of a person who looked like Jesus, but this is not Jesus. And obviously, Muhammad, he carry on with that uh, 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 fallacy. So it's possible, but we cannot really confirm 100%. But there is people who they believe that Jesus, because he's son of God, well, there's no way that God, his father, they will let him be tortured. And actually, once a Muslim, uh, an Egyptian Muslim, he said to me, well, you know what? If Jesus is the son of God, then his father will be save him. I said, okay, well, if this is your logic, that's good. Because that means Jesus is son of God in Islam. He said, how? He said, you just told me if Jesus is son of God, his father would save him. He said, yeah. I said, okay, didn't Allah save him in Islam? <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, Muhammad, obviously, he have nothing of his own pocket, nothing about Christianity, nothing about Judaism. He is a person who copy, but he have a bad ears to the point even he cannot pronounce names correctly. So Amran became Umran, uh, you know, all the names, he got them wrong. Uh, so Muhammad, he cannot be a person who is making things as much he is copying, especially what's come to Christianity and Judaism. And even the stories of like, as an example, you, you know, the chapter in 18 is speaking about the seven sleepers. But this is a story written hundreds of years before Muhammad, mm -hmm. and it's a fiction story. Yep. So how Muhammad put it in the Quran? 
because simply he's trying to bring stories which is interesting to his book to make himself a prophet who knows and if you read the, the chapter you will die laughing you know the, the verses says some they say they are four and their dog is number five some they say they are five and their dog is number six some they say they etc i mean this is silly this is not god talking just tell us the number and that's it still until now we do not know what the number so muhammad is a person he was under pressure People, they ask him, they challenge him, especially the Jews. He, because this is why he hate them, you know. When mm -hmm. the Jews, say, they came to him and they said to him, tell us about Zul Qurnayn. It was a trap. They are not coming to ask him. They are making fun of him. And Muhammad, he got the get the bait. He was a fool. So he started telling them, what is the first meal for going to heaven? In the heaven, it is the liver of the whale. And how the baby will be, how, how, the, how, the, how the child will resemble the parents. If the father have orgasm first, the baby will be a male. Mm -hmm. If the women have orgasm, the baby will be a female, which is a stupid too. And mm -hmm. then he to talk about Alexander the Great. So Muhammad, he hated the Jews for always getting him busted without him knowing. But it was too late. That's it. He made verses. He gave it and people are laughing. Mm -hmm. And Muhammad, he wanted to seek revenge because they got him busted. Yeah, and guys, that, that's basically the, the history of Islam. Um, the people who could actually understand and who knew why the things that Muhammad could be. Keep, keep in mind, you could go up to someone who doesn't know anything and say anything you want, and that person won't be able to respond. But if you go to people who actually uh, know something, then if you say something stupid, they're going to call you. They're going to call you stupid. And so Muhammad kept doing this, and people kept pointing out how he's wrong, and he doesn't know what he's talking about, and they suddenly become his enemies. But eventually, eventually, once Muhammad has a big enough army, then no one's allowed to say anything. No one's allowed to say anything critical of Muhammad's teachings. And so that's what you have in the Muslim world: is it eventually became the position that you're not allowed to criticize or question the things that Muhammad said, no matter how silly and ridiculous they are. But now, guys, we're in a different we're in a different time period right now. Yeah, there are places in the world where you get in, in trouble, but here in the West and on the internet, we're allowed to point these things out, and yet the Muslims are still defending some of the silliest things that have that have ever been said by anyone, and they're defending them as as obviously true when they're obviously false. Um, here's a here's a good question, Christian Prince. Um, <clears throat> so the Muslims said Judas is in the cross, so the Muslims are the true. Antichrist. Now, just to be clear, everyone, it's not the Quran that says that Judas was the one who was crucified in the place of Jesus, but that is a very common Muslim belief today. And if you just think about that, right, in, in Christianity, the innocent Jesus is crucified on behalf of sinful men. And the Muslims of today, a very common belief among Muslims is that it was actually Judas who was crucified in place of Jesus. And so now you've got the guilty sinner Judas being crucified on behalf of the innocent Jesus. It's a complete reversal of the gospel. They completely flip it on its head. Uh, Christian Prince, is can we say that Islam is an antichrist religion? We're based in the Bible, absolutely, because the Bible says whoever, the, who is the Antichrist, the one who denied the Father and the Son, right? So, based in the Bible, absolutely, Islam, but not a person, Islam as a religion, as a cult, it is uh, uh, an Antichrist cult. And Muhammad, he, in the Hadith, he says, uh, al -mahi. They ask him, what, what do you mean? al -mahi in Arabic, it's the, the, the one who erase. He says, I will erase Judaism and Christianity. So, he made his target clear I'm going to erase it, all right? Mm -hmm. So by this, by that statement, he will erase what? He will erase the belief that the Messiah, who what we believe in him, and, and he was crucified, and that what he will erase, and that will make him himself an Antichrist too, but not the Antichrist. I, I don't believe he is the Antichrist. He is Antichrist, yes, but not the Antichrist. At the same time, remember, Muhammad never met Christians. I don't believe Muhammad ever met Christians. He met Nasara. Who is Nasara? You say, I'm a Christian. What, what not Nasara? Ask any Arabic Christian. Who, tell him, tell me how you say you are a Christian in Arabic. He will say, Masihi. Masihi, coming from the word Messiah. Not a single Arabic Christian, he will even will accept to call him Nasara because that will, will sound like an insult. So, for us, that is clear evidence that Muhammad, he met a group who they are Nasara. And I believe Nasara here is coming from the word, from the Hebrew where the Nazareth, which is not the Nazareth from the, the city, the Nazarene, which is the in Hebrew, like the one who is poor, poor in the understanding, not poor in the money. So the Christian, they call such a group, 
Nasara, for they are poor in the understanding of the Bible, and they were rejected. And this is why they all exist in the Arabian Peninsula. They were they run away because they rejected from the Christian community. They went to a land where Roman are not exist and they have no authority. So let's make it clear at that time, obviously, those Nasara, they were not welcome in the land or the territory of the Roman. This is why the same for the Jews. Why the Jews are there? Because the Jews are not welcome between the Romans, especially after what happened in 614, where the Jews took the side with the Persian, and even before that. So the Jews, they run away for their life. They went to the Arabian Peninsula, and the same as the Nasara, because in that territory, the Romans have no authority. It's a, just a desert. There's nobody live there. Mm -hmm. And this is what Muhammad met. He met Jews, and he met Nasara. He did not meet the Christians. Um, yeah, so guys, uh, try and try and research a little bit about the historical background there. I think it uh, might clear up some of the, the things uh, Muhammad said and some of the positions that Muhammad's hold, uh, Muslims hold today. Um, this is kind of a two-part question here, but uh, it's a good topic. So the, the question is, did Muhammad have a problem with anyone leaving him? And the second part is, is it because his parents left him? when they died so uh christian prince did muhammad have a problem with people leaving him leaving his religion well yeah you know muhammad he says that the one who changed his religion kill him mm -hmm. you know and uh, uh, uh muhammad i don't think muhammad we do not know really the real uh, fathers or parents of uh, muhammad mm -hmm. you know all the stories about muhammad like as an example what is the name of the father of muhammad abdullah right mm -hmm. Okay, how his name is Abdullah, but he don't believe in Allah. I mean, this, this is stupid, right? Mm -hmm. So how they call him Abdullah, but their family, his family, they don't believe in Abdullah. Mm -hmm. If you go and read all the names of the family of Muhammad, you will see Abdul Muttalib, Abdul Uzza, Abdul Abdu, Abdu, Abdu Manat. So all of them, they are worshipping idols. So why the father of Muhammad was called Abdullah? And yet they say to us, he don't believe in Allah. So that is silly. I, and Muhammad, according to, if you have my books, you will see that Muhammad was born four years after his father's death. Okay, how he can be his son? This is why this, the, the, the Shafi'i, the Hanbali, the Maliki, they have different opinion about how a woman, she can deliver a child after the death of her husband. They go from between two years up to seven to ten. Imagine a woman, a Muslim woman, they went in the Islamic sect. There's four Islamic major sect. A woman, she can be delivering a baby after her husband's death up to 10 years that's madness and then uh, 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 if we go and read we will find that the father of muhammad he was paid for sex uh, uh, the, the sister of waraq ibn nawfal she offered the father of muhammad 100 camel to sleep with her which i find the number is exaggeration it's like saying i will give you 100 car these days mm -hmm. you know, 100 camel for, uh, for the arab at that time this is like you will make you really rich so he, you know, he told her, I will go to the, father, the mother of Muhammad and I will come back to you, which means he agreed. Mm -hmm. When he came back, she said, I have no need for you no more because you slept with that woman. So here you, you notice, uh, you understand from the Arab, from the Muslims uh, books, that Muhammad's father was a jagalo in the term of getting money for sex. And then uh, uh, the father of Muhammad and his grandfather, supposedly, they married the same women. And then they have sons and they have different ages. And Muhammad's father, he died supposedly four months or three months after uh, after the marriage the wedding so how muhammad can how muhammad can be born four years after mostly i believe this is my belief from my study that waraq ibn nawfal is the real father of muhammad not abdullah this is why i always hmm. find muhammad is with waraq ibn nawfal when when waraq ibn nawfal if you remember the hadith it says when waraq ibn nawfal he died what muhammad tried to do um he, he tried he, to jump from... Oh, from, oh, okay, you're talking about the suicide attempt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but this is when, after Waraka, he died. Okay, uh -huh. why? Uh, why when Waraka died, Muhammad, he became so desperate? Mm. What happened? Because he had a special relationship with him. When Muhammad was lost as a child, where they found him? With Waraka. When Muhammad lost in the desert, where they found him? With Waraka. Waraka is everywhere in the life of Muhammad. So when Waraka, he died, according to the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, and this is Sahih, they cannot say it's a lie, it says that the inspiration of Allah paused. Allah will not mm -hmm. send Quran no more. And Muhammad became so sad and he decided to jump from the top of the mountain and he tried to do that many times. And each time he go to the top of the mountain, uh, you know, uh, Jibreel, he appeared to him and he says, don't do it. Uh, uh, for sure you are a prophet of Allah. So 
This is what is written in Sahih Bukhari, hadith number 6982. Uh, but why Waraqa is all over and why Waraqa, even Waraqa is the one who told him what is the name of the uh, of the angel who, who met him, right? When he squeezed yeah. him. Okay, how Waraqa he knew? I mean, he did not even see him. And why why Khadija, she took him to Waraqa? Mm -hmm. So Waraqa is all over the life of Muhammad. There is two people they made Muhammad a prophet. Khadija, money, and Waraqa. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Um, it, this one is uh, this one's about Lot, and we'll probably take uh, one or two more real quick after this. But uh, this one is about Lot, and uh, <clears throat> she says, "Can you explain how Lot became a prophet in Islam, and why did Muhammad think that Lot was a prophet?" And guys, if you don't know why this is important, um, in the Bible you have the story of Lot. Lot and Abraham separate. And Lot, after the, the fall of, of Sodom and Gomorrah, um, his daughters apparently think that they're the last people on earth. And so they want to, uh, they want to start the human population up again and, again. and so they know that her, their dad won't sleep with them. So they get him drunk. They sleep with him and then come out of that relationship, some of the enemies of the Jews, the Ammonites and the, the Moabites. Um, but Muslims look at that and they say, look, you see what the Bible does? It Look how it treats the prophets. It accuses a prophet of incest, where the Bible is just recording what happened, whether it's whether it's good or bad. Um, but Christian Prince, any any thoughts on that or, or how why Muslims think that Lot is a prophet or how, the, how Muhammad came to that conclusion? Uh, you know, uh, Muhammad, as we said, he is just a, a person who copy. He learned from people around him. And mostly he is getting wrong information. And mostly, I think the, the, the Jews, they were feeding him wrong information on purpose. You know, I don't believe it was happening like this because it's too much to believe that Muhammad was really, I mean, uh, Muhammad, you see, he, 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 he always uh, look at the Jews as people of the book because they know, you know, they are people who have knowledge. So he saw in them teachers, but the Jews because he's, he came to them claiming to be a prophet. Muhammad did not come to them just to live. He came to them after supposedly he ran away from Mecca. So now they knew that this guy, he claimed to be a prophet, prophet from supposedly Allah. So the Jews, they feeded him false information just to make fun of him. And Muhammad, he got the bait. Always Muhammad, he is a victim of the Jews. They did not harm him physically, but they did harm him mentally and did harm his belief. They made fun of him. So, uh, about incest, well, the Quran speak that uh, uh, you know in chapter five, verse number twenty-seven. If you go and read the interpretation, that the daughters of Adam, uh, uh, Allah, when he uh, uh, he made the, the the wife of Adam Eve have children, uh, each time she gave birth, she gave birth to a twin, a male and a female, and Adam he married the male from this twin to the other female from the other twin, but what happened? that the male, the tooth male now, they want to marry one sister. Why? Because one of them, she have a cross eyes or she don't look good. So Allah told them, okay, make uh, a sacrifice. And whatever sacrifice, the one I accept his sacrifice is the one who can take that female. So if the Muslims are against, uh, you know, uh, uh, incest, uh, then, uh, you know, uh, they should not accept that verse. Now, if we go in a different verse, and this is very important, if you go in the Quran, in chapter 25, verse number uh, 54, 54, 52, let me remember, uh, uh, 54, yeah, 25, uh, 54. It says, خَلَقَ مِنَ الْمَاءِ بَشَرَ فَجَعَلَهُ نَسَبٌ مُصِرًا If you go to Al-Qurtubi, it says <coughs> that a Muslim man, he can have sex with his daughter if she is a daughter from adultery. This is Islam today. And before so this is you see in the in the Bible is speaking about a story of two girls because they don't want to be without children's and they are afraid they will disappear from the universe no men left they did that the Bible did not approve what they did the Bible report mm -hmm. here we have religion and we have a scholars saying if you have a daughter from a girlfriend from adultery the mother and the daughter are lawful for you. And by the way, I challenge any Muslim. You see, here we go in front of you, David. Mimi Hijab and his nurse Ali Dawa, all those kids. If anyone dare to say to me that I just told a lie, I am willing to come down here to your show and we will open the screen and we will read together 
in front of them from the most official government website of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And I challenged them to say, I am lying. This is Quran, and this is the interpretation of the Muslim scholars and the Islamic sect. And not only that, they say it is the, according to the most accurate of scholars in the religion that because she is not his daughter from marriage, she is not forbidden for him to have sex with the daughter and her mother. And here we go. I'm willing to take a challenge anytime. If any Muslim want to accuse me of a lie that Islam allowed you. And by the way, I don't say, I didn't say, remember, David, mm -hmm. I did not say Islam allowed you to have sex with your daughter from marriage. No. Mm -hmm. Quran says you cannot have sex with your daughter from marriage. But if she is not from marriage, you can have sex with her. All right, so uh, you you Muslims, you heard that challenge. If you want to challenge Christian Prince here, I'd be happy to moderate moderate that discussion, and we can put the the sources up on the screen here. All right, we want to close out after this one. Uh, we don't want to close out just talking about Islam because I mean, man, when we hear about the things that Muhammad said and the things in the Quran, uh, just want to go take a bath. So we want to conclude on a more positive note here, um, Christian Prince. Um, so Tippy Bear here says, ask Christian Prince to show that Paul is a prophet in Islam. Now, uh, for those of you who are new to all of this, Muslims like to blame the apostle Paul for corrupting Christianity. And there's a reason for that, right? They didn't just say, oh, Paul is an especially evil dude one day or something like that. It's basically they're forced into it, right? Because they know that their book affirms uh, that, that, that Jesus spoke the truth and that Jesus' original followers were devout Muslims. And yet they know that Christianity doesn't teach is what Islam taught. Christianity teaches that Jesus is the divine son who died on the cross for sins and rose from the dead. So they have to blame someone for corrupting Christianity. Uh, and a Muslim who doesn't know anything at all will, will point to like the Council of Nicaea and stuff and say, oh, that's where Christianity was corrupted. But they got a problem because we can trace all of the, the core Christian doctrines back to the first century. And so we know that these doctrines were there in the first century. If the doctrines were there in the first century, then as a Muslim, if you want to say that Christianity was corrupted, you have to say that Christianity was corrupted in the first century. So you have to blame someone. But you can't blame Jesus. He's a devout Muslim prophet. You can't blame his followers. They're devout Muslims. So you need someone who wasn't Jesus and wasn't one of his original followers who was also powerful enough to somehow corrupt all of Christianity. And the only person they've been able to come up with is the Apostle Paul. And so Muslims today love to blame the Apostle Paul. And they, if you listen to what Muslims say, they make him more, sound more powerful than Allah with the way this guy comes in there and corrupts it. Because Allah in the Quran is saying things like um, he's going to protect Jesus' followers until the day of resurrection. Uh, so th that's those are the kinds of things that are being said in the Quran. And yet Muslims want to say that Paul came in there and just corrupted it and too bad for Allah, too bad for all the work that Jesus had done. He flipped it on its head. But if I understand correctly, Christian Prince, that was not the position of Muslims centuries ago. Is that correct? Well, you know, this is a challenge for the Muslims. It looked like the Muslims, Zakir Naik, uh, Brother Titor, I told you that the one who collapsed the Bible, it is named Paul. And Paul, he is the one who fabricated the Bible. No. Okay, Zakir Naik, can you show us reference where Paul, he corrupted the Bible? They, they, they did that. Can you show us the reference where it says that Paul is the one who corrupted the Bible? So Muslims, they are copy-paste people. They don't have any knowledge I am saying to you, Muslims, look like you are a lot smarter than your prophet because your prophet, he have no idea about Paul. He never said such a thing. Ibn Kathir, he says, if you go to chapter uh, chapter 36 in the Quran, you will see in, in verse number 14, it says, we sent to them, we sent to them two messengers, and then we sent the third to string them. If you go to Ibn Kathir, you will see Ibn Kathir, not a Christian prince, saying that the third is Paul. Mm -hmm. So Ibn Kathir, he must be a Christian. He must be working for us. Maybe we paid him. Look like Zakir Naik and the dad are smart and Ibn Kathir is a donkey. So obviously here, there is some kind of uh, copy-paste uh, uh, agenda and nobody want to read. You know, they heard uh, Zakir Naik saying that, they heard the dad saying that, and we copy and we throw it. Now the question, the challenge for the Muslims,
Why your prophet do not know about Paul being corrupt in the Bible? Why Allah did not say that in the Quran? And why in chapter 36, verse number 14, according to you Muslims, those are three messengers, three musketeers, sent by Jesus. How Jesus can send people to be messengers unless he is God? How a prophet, he can make you a prophet. How somebody, he himself, he is just a prophet, he can make you a prophet. Not only that, if you go and read the interpretation, you will see that they resurrected people from death. Those are three, Paul and, and John, Yohanna, uh, and Peter, they resurrected people from, from death. And the most strong one of them is Paul. Because look like Paul, for Muhammad, he have a black belt. So he is the most strong one, according to Ibn Kathir and the, the biggest scholars. But Paul is the enemy of Allah, according to the Abduls, who have no idea what they are talking about. So my friend, Muslims are the same as somebody, his wife is a cheater on him. He is the last one to know. Mm -hmm. Don't learn Islam from a Muslim. They do not know. They don't speak the language. And even the one who speaks the language, he lie in order to protect, as Mimi Hijabi did. Now uh, that is uh, that is interesting that the the earlier generation of of Muslims, earlier generations of Muslims and Muslim commentators, it's almost like they had more respect for for the Quran than than Muslims today. Because you know, if, if you look at what the Quran says, that Allah protected the true followers of Jesus until they became victorious over those who rejected Jesus. Well, the people who became victorious in Christianity were people who believed in the Apostle Paul. Uh, they believed in the Gospels that we have. They believed in the letters of Paul. So according to the Quran, those are the true followers of Jesus. Um, again, Allah said that he was going to... Um, uh, that he was going to protect the Christians, Jesus' followers, until the day of resurrection, when your average Muslim believes that Paul immediately came in there and undid all the work that Jesus had done, and Allah couldn't stop him. And so it's just uh, the earlier generations of Muslims wanted to say, no, Paul Paul was was someone who was sent by Jesus. They, they had to believe that, because otherwise they're accusing Paul of being more powerful than Allah, and they didn't want to do that. Muslims today, nope, they want to, they want to deify Paul. In other words, you've got... You've got Muhammad here, right? You've got Muhammad, and Muhammad is a slave of Allah. So there's Muhammad, and then there's Allah. But then, according to Muslims today, the Apostle Paul came in there, and he just overpowered Allah. So the Apostle Paul is more powerful than Allah, but Paul calls himself a mere bondservant of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, according to Muslims today, you've got Muhammad, but Allah is more powerful than him, but Paul is more powerful than Allah, and Paul is a mere bondservant of the Lord Jesus Christ. My Muslim friends, whom should you be listening to? Muhammad? Allah? No, of course you should be turning to the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, Christian Prince, we want to close out, but uh, any last words you have for the Muslims who are watching? Uh, I feel sorry for them. And you are following a false god. You do not know where the sun set. You do not know how the day and the night they work. You do not know how the baby is made. You know nothing. I feel sorry for you. And thank you, David, for having me. I really appreciate you inviting me here. It was a pleasure to speak to you. This is the first time we have a conversation. And I was honored to be in your program. And thank you very much. And God bless you. Mm -hmm. And God bless your family. And we pray for them. Thank you. And uh, I, I like I like what you said there, uh, Christian Prince, that, that we, we feel sorry for some of these people. Not uh, I, I don't hate Muslims. Um, but we, yeah, we feel we feel we feel we feel bad for you. Right. You've been misled all your lives. You've been told you've been fed false information uh, all your lives. And so we're here because we're trying to help you. We've dedicated our lives to trying to help you because you've been manipulated and brainwashed all your life into believing things that are obvious, obvious nonsense. And then someone like Christian Prince comes along and he tries to show you, guys, you've been lied to all your life. I want you to know the truth. I want you to spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ and you hate him for it. Why would you hate someone who spends his life trying to help you guys? All right, so uh, thanks to Christian Prince for joining us. And people are already asking in the in the chat when we will do something like this again. But now we're now we're in contact. So uh, yeah, maybe we'll pick maybe we'll pick some uh, specific topic for next time uh, when we can get together and discuss the topic. Or if a Muslim wants to have a discussion with Christian Prince uh, again, I'd be happy to uh, moderate. But everyone, again, uh, be sure to hit that like button. 
and you have the links to Christian Prince's, um, his channel, his Facebook page, and his, his Patreon. So again, before you leave, go ahead and click that Patreon link and support him for five, ten dollars a month or something like that. Some of you, some of you have awesome jobs and stuff like this, and you could you could support him with a hundred bucks a month or something like that. Uh, but but again, as someone who knows how much work goes into really putting out lots of content on Islam and buying the resources and having good equipment. There's a lot of costs associating just with, you know, doing stuff on YouTube and Facebook and stuff like that. So uh, if you want to see Christian Prince uh, continue doing his work and, and doing more in the future, uh, be sure to support him. Other than that, I'll see you all again next time. Be sure to subscribe to our channels if you're not subscribed. And uh, God bless everyone. Thank you, David. Take care. Good night. Oh, yeah.